The offensive numbers for Boise State are staggering. The Broncos lead the nation with nearly 47 points per game. Boise State tops in pass efficiency as well with 30 touchdown passes. It all adds up to 518 yards per game, second in the country. And with 25 touchdowns of his own, Boise State's Brock Forsey leads the nation in scoring. Still, Boise State needs a win in Nevada today to clinch an outright whack title and an 11-1 season. One problem, Boise State has not won in Reno since 1987. An unlucky 0-7 run in Reno. Is Boise State's unlucky streak in Reno about to change? It's Boise State, Nevada, live from Mackey Stadium in Reno on the Bronco Television Network. From the biggest little city in the world, Reno, Nevada, Mackey Stadium, where the Broncos have not won since 1987. The Bronco Television Network presents Western Athletic Conference football. Today, the 23rd ranked Boise State Broncos, 10-1 on the year, 7-0 in the WAC against the Nevada, Nevada Wolfpack. They come into here with a 4-3 conference record. Should be a whale of a game. Hi, everybody. Wayne Zubak, along with Larry Pulowski, and welcome again to the Bronco Television Network. So much riding on this game for Boise State, folks. Boy, there really is. This is week number 12 of the Leave No Doubt Tour, and 10 out of those 11 weeks, they've done what they needed to do. This is a critical, crucial game. And the kids are fired up. I just hope they're not too fired up. Last week against Louisiana Tech, Broncos not happy with the way they run the football. However, one Scott Huff scooter says it's going to change today. Yeah, Scott Huff is the anchor of that offensive line, Wayne. And this offensive line today has got to have a big game. They've got to open some holes for Brock Forsey, who's a little banged up. But these guys have been solid all season. Gabe Franklin, a defensive back, he's going to see a lot of one. Nate Burleson. Yeah, Gabe's got his work cut out for him today, but he's got seven interceptions. He has five in whack play. He has played a whale of a cornerback position of recent, and he will be tested today. At quarterback for the Wolfpack, we're talking Zach Threadgill. This guy has seven 300-yard games passing. Yeah, Zach is the uh, two-time WAC player of the week against uh, BYU and Rice, three, over 3,000 yards passing. A very solid quarterback, and he has got one major target to throw to. You bet. You're talking about Nate Burleson, a guy who's got 131 passes, Larry, and he's only 12 shy of the single-season NCAA record. Just to put that in perspective, the second leading receiver in the WAC has 67 catches. He has 131. Those are unbelievable numbers, and he's racked up 1,558 receiving yards. All right, as always, the third member of our broadcast team on the sidelines is Jeff Caves. Jeff, what are you finding out today? Well, we've already got some news down here. Ryan Nelson was expected to get some reps today. That's not going to happen. He's got some nerve damage in his shoulder, so he will not be at defensive end. You'll see Bobby Hammer out there all afternoon, Wayne. Plus, you'll see Alex Guerrero taking reps at defensive tackle. He's been practicing there this week. Wait. All right, thank you, Jeff. We'll keep uh, keep us posted. Overhead door keys to the game, Larry. Well, offensively, they just have to let this offense flow, flow freely. They pressed a little bit against La Tech last week, and it hurt them. Defensively, they've got to create turnovers, and they have got to get some pressure on the quarterback because Threadgill will throw an interception now and then, and they need to make that happen today. The walk around Reno last night, there was orange everywhere. A lot of Bronco fans, maybe three to 5,000 of them. There they are, all stacked up now, getting ready for the Boise State Broncos and Nevada Wolfpack. We'll be back with a kickoff after this. Well, what a beautiful day here in Reno, Nevada for a football game. As you can see, this place is filling up right now. This is the 29th game. The Broncos did it overall in the series 16 to 12, but they haven't won here since 1987. Last year, Boise State won 49 to 7. And in fact, in the last two meetings, Larry, which have both been in Boise, Broncos have outscored Nevada 101 to 24. Well, there's a take, uh, take a good look at the two head coaches for these ball clubs. And there is history. Everybody knows Chris Tormey used to run the Idaho Vandal program. Dan Hawkins, uh, I believe, might have coached against him as an assistant one year. And leave no doubt, that's the name of the tour of the Broncos have been on. And we mentioned it as we went into that last break that maybe about 5,000 Bronco fans have made the trip here to Reno. They are all in orange. It's an impressive sight across the way from our press box vantage view. And here, of course, you see Zach Threadgill, the guy who's going to have to get the job done here today. He has seven 300-yard passing games. You know, he can get the ball to people, and most of the time it's Nate Burleson. Yeah, it is. And he's got some other guys that he throws to, but obviously if, it, if Burleson's got 131 receptions, he's honed in on him pretty tight. How about Ryan Dinwiddie? Ryan Dinwiddie with a pass efficiency rating of 205.62. It's off the chart. It, it, because he hasn't played in 75% of the games, it doesn't count. But I'll tell you what, that is impressive nonetheless. All right, this is your first half kickoff brought to you by your neighborhood Pizza Hut restaurant. Pizza Hut, the best pizza under one roof. 
Pizza Hut getting ready for the kickoff here as we are. Sit back, enjoy. Boise State, Nevada. You know, they're going to have this, the WAC will have this game be the final game of the season every year. Why? Because they know it's a great rivalry. It can turn into something special. And with the UCLA the Bronco fans down here, you can tell it already is. So the Broncos with David Michael and Brock Forsey deep. Here's the kickoff. We are underway in Reno. It comes to David Michael about four yards deep. He's going to take it out. Has a wedge up the middle. Michael out to the 23, maybe 24-yard line, and that's where the Broncos will have it first on offense. You can see Michael with that brace. Coaches say his knee's okay, but that uh, D. Mike feels a little bit more confident with that uh, brace on that right knee. And I think the first time you experience a knee injury, Wayne, you need a little bit of reinforcement mentally more so than physically, and I think that brace is more mental for David than it is anything else. But he looks good running up down the side. Here comes the Bronco offense and quarterback Ryan Dinwiddie. We'll get first shot of things here. As you can see, he's out of Elk Grove, California, and what a year he's having. He's come back from that broken ankle. Nearly 2,000 yards, 18 touchdowns, and only three interceptions, and here we go. Broncos first and ten to hand it off to Brock Forsey, and Forsey makes it out to the 26 yard line. Take a look here at the Tom Scott Motors starting lineups for Boise State on that offensive front. Darren College, what a good one he's turning into be. Scooter Scott Huff says he wants one offensive play before his career is over. I don't know think it'll come here today. In the backfield, Brock Forsey, what a year he has, leading the nation in rushing with 25 touchdowns. Lou Fanuki had a big game last week. They got some good people. Of course, Billy Wingfield's having himself a season. Gain of one. They mark it at the 25 yard line. Didn't really back the pass. Over the middle. Pass it complete to Billy Wingfield. Plays at the 40. Cuts back in midfield and he's into Nevada territory at the 48 yard line. Billy Wingfield. Defensive lineups now. The Tom Scott Motor starting lineups. George Cordova, he is. A stud. I'll tell you what, he's a guy, 6'2", 241, that gets the job done there on that defensive front. There you see the linebackers, pretty good set of linebackers, but they have been burnt this year for some yards. And then in the defensive secondary, as you can see, they got a lot of kids coming back next year. That's one thing we're excited about. Yeah, they are young on the defense. And Keone Kau, number 39 at free safety, is probably their best defender. Right, force it. Nice little run by Brock Forsey as he just got in there. And that's what the Broncos want to do is establish the run. But that time, Chris Berry was right there, the defensive tackle, 6'3", 285-pounder. Well, the first two plays from scrimmage that were not a pass, the Wolfpack defensive front's done a really good job of controlling the line of scrimmage. Well, they've set down the gauntlet, I think. You know, that they, if you're going to run against this, you're going to have to block us. And so far, on two running plays, Broncos have gained two yards. So Boise State now with four wide receivers. Brock Forsey, the lone setback. He gets it straight up the middle, and he has tripped at the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, he had some running room. Still, he's at about the 41-yard line. It's going to leave him about third and three. And third and three in this offense for the Broncos is wide open. I mean, there's a multitude of things they can do as we take a look at Chris Tormey. Very nervous, it seemed to me, before this game started today. Chris Tormey, 3-3 three three against the Broncos in his tenure at Idaho and, of course, here at Nevada. Rain last night, but this morning it turned out cloudy, and then the clouds have just melted away, and it's a beautiful day for football. Third down and four for Boise State. Dinwiddie in the pocket, throws to Wingfield. He has the first down, fumbles the football, but they say it's incomplete. Never quite had it, according to the official. No, they're giving him the catch. They, they said the ground created okay. the fumble. Well, he started crawling for it. I got you. Okay. <laughs> hey, when that ball comes loose, you do start crawling for it. He, he was, you, don't, you don't want to leave that up to the referees. Here's Wingfield on just a quick little three-yard out route, just enough to get the first down. And you see he hit the ground, and then the ball popped loose. All right. It's still a panicky feeling. Well, you see a Nevada defender waving incomplete and whatnot. A little goofy play, but the Broncos get a first down, thanks to Billy Wingfield. Dinwiddie looking deep. Got Tim Gilligan, that's complete down to about the 15-yard line. What a catch by Gilligan. Great coverage there by Marlon McLaughlin, number eight for Nevada. But Gilligan just went sky high for that ball. Boy, Tim Gilligan, he basically just kind of shielded, shielded the defender away from the ball. Yeah, we'll take a look at it again. Dinwiddie's got all kinds of time to throw the ball, and an excellent job of shielding the defender away from the ball. Good call on that one. Broncos at the 15-yard line, first down. Broncos inside the red zone, just red hot. 
Brock Forsey, foul some blocking, cut back up the middle. He's inside the 10, very close to another first down. Brock Forsey. I'll go to the Broncos in the red zone, 55 of 63 this year. As you look at Brock's season numbers, 47 touchdowns, eight field goals. The Broncos have scored 29 rushing touchdowns and 18 through the air. You can see a great shot of the action up front and the blocking. A couple of guys pulling, a little trap play up the middle worked very well. Broncos, as I mentioned, like 87% in the red zone, and it, that includes two kneel downs to end games. Second down, about three. Forsey again, up the middle. That's going to be a first and goal to go for Boise State down at the four-yard line. First down. Well, and the question about Brock Forsey today is how long is that shoulder and neck going to hold up? He has taken a tremendous pounding this season, but is there anybody tougher than number 36 on this Bronco team? If there is, I don't know him. You know, Coach Hawkins said the other night, we're doing a radio show with him on KBOI, he said, the more he gets hurt, the ornery he gets. <laughs> Look at that. That 25 touchdowns leads the nation, and somehow, some way, the injustice of it all, he did not make the semifinalists for the Dope Walker voting. I can't believe that, but Rockers with the first and goal now from the four-yard line. Forsey up the middle, and he is in for the touchdown. Brock Forsey. Well, there's number 26, and that didn't take him long. Less than five minutes have ticked off this clock. But Brock Forsey found Paydirt already. So the Broncos take it all the way down the field. The drive started at the 24-yard line. So 76 yards. Here it is again. Brock up the middle. Look at the hole. I mean, that's tremendous. A good job of filling there by Cowell. But he can't get it done. Forsey just bowls him over into the end zone. Yeah, Forsey had already made four yards when Kyle hit him at the goal line. And Forsey's not going to be stopped at that point. Kalakai's kick after is good. And the Broncos have taken a quick lead here. They've taken the opening kickoff and driven it 76 yards for a touchdown. One more look at this touchdown by Brock Forsey. Now there's a good ground angle. And look at the impact there. Again, looks like that shoulder holding up pretty well on that play. Nine play. They're officially going to call it a 75-yard drive. The Broncos use 4-14 off the clock. And Brock Forsey has carried the ball six times for 23 yards. Billy Wingfield a couple of catches on that drive. He now has two catches for 30 yards. And Tim Gilligan with one big catch, a 22-yard gain. Well, very impressive start for the Broncos. There's some uh, stats and numbers on Mr. Forsey. Because I just mentioned the Doak Walker semifinalist vote was taken just on Thursday, and he did not make the final eight. That's unbelievable when you look at the other stats that are up there. All right, so the Broncos will be kicking it off. Back there deep, Buddy Lewis and also Ronnie Hardiman. Tyler Jones tees it up the 35-yard line, and he's going to kind of squib it. Bounces over Hardeman's head and out of the end zone. A touchback. Now that's a different way to bring him out to the 20 without a return. Well, I'm sure a special teams coach Kent Ruddle would like to say it was planned that way, but I think that's one of those lucky bounces of the ball that happens with that little oblong pigskin. I agree. There's Zach Fredgill, a 6'2 senior out of Glendale, Arizona. And he's got some impressive numbers this year. But you see the touchdowns and the interceptions. That's the one Achilles heel is that he's been intercepted 16 and, times. And almost one half of his receptions have gone to number 80, Nate Burleson. Looking, throwing, complete. Goes the other way this time. And there's a fumble. And the Broncos have recovered. Boise State recovers, I believe. The Broncos act like they do. We've had no yes, official they signal. It. They do. Boise State. The pass was out there to the Charon Flowers. And Flowers got stripped of the ball. Flowers was fighting for some extra yardage, and I'm not sure who raked it out of there. Julius Roberts is getting up, jumping up and down, so I don't know if he raked it out or, or recovered the fumble. Quick three-step drop, goes to Flowers in the flat. Now watch him, he's trying to fight for extra yards. Oh, quick Michael. Michael knocked it out, absolutely. Well, it looked like Nevada got there first, so there must have been a heck of a scrum down there. Yeah, maybe Julius Roberts is stronger than anybody else down there. So here come the Broncos on offense. 26 yard line for Boise State. Tripped up is Jay Swillen. He tripped over Ryan Dinwiddie, and I wonder if Dinwiddie gets a tackle. That might be Dinwiddie's first tackle of the year. Boy, Jay, you can see he's incredulous there. 
couldn't believe that. Well, they were trying the fly motion sweep. All that is is they bring that wide receiver across the middle. You see, you've seen it 100,000 times out of this offense where they bring that guy in motion across the formation. Right as they snap the ball, it gives them the option to hand it off or to use it as a play action thing. So the Broncos lose about six on that play. Dinwiddie hands it off to Brock Force. He bounces it outside. Now heads up north and south. He gets close to a first down. That's going to be about a 15-yard gain by Brock Forsey. Great block on the outside from the wide receiver spot by Billy Wingfield. Billy's out there just really hustling to try to get the last block. And Forsey, when he comes off the corner, see a little delay draw. It's supposed to go up the middle, but he bounces it to the outside as he does so well. And what you won't see is Billy Wingfield, there he is right there, doing a heck of a job getting him some more yards. Boy, look at the speed to get outside, yep. too. They're measuring this. It may not be a first down. He's a little bit shy, it looks like, from here. Well, Cordova, the right defensive end, is a guy that has to contain that. You can see how short it is. And Cordova just got beat to the outside by pure raw speed. Still a gain of about 15. Brock Forsey now. Seven carries, 37 yards, and a touchdown. Take a look at the officials here today. Rich Cullen, he is our referee. He says it's going to be. Second down, third down. So third down and about a foot. I forgot about that first play. Of course, it's kind of forgettable, I think. Right up the middle. That'll be good for a first down as the Broncos just hanging on to the football. You said last night after we went to dinner, Larry, that you just kind of walking around downtown just checking things out, and you just said you Bronco people all over the place, huh? I mean, you know... I went to school here, I can say this, orange is an ugly color. <laughs> but you know what, it looks pretty good today in the stands. It looked pretty good walking around the streets of Reno last night. All right, first down for the Broncos. Take the fly sweep, hand off to Brock Forsey. Forsey drags people inside the 10, down to about the seven yard line. Well, there must have been a good mojo to speak session last night because uh, these guys came out ready to play. Boy, I tell you what, how frustrated is Chris Tormey now? I mean, here's his team. Had the ball one play, and now the Broncos are right down knocking on the door again. You know, every Friday night, Coach Hawk has his little mojo session where he brings out some quotes and talks a little philosophical to the guys. It's become a tradition for the Broncos every Friday night. Gain of six, second down and four. Second down and three, maybe. Four seat. That play's been working up the middle. And the Broncos have it inside the five-yard line. Could be another first and goal to go. Now that's just a killer when you get that first down inside the five. This will be the second time they've done it in the first quarter. And there's the aforementioned Chris Torman. And it's like, what do we do? They just they don't give us the ball back. So it's at the four-yard line, first and goal, Boise State. It's a little deja vu, isn't it? First and goal from the four the last time. Just a couple minutes ago. Forsey, down to the one. I think they tried the same play. <laughs> it almost worked again. Well, you know, right now, everything obviously up the middle is very soft. Boise State knows it. They feel it. They're following Scott Huff. We featured Scooter, and they're going right up the middle. Just area blocking there. No trickery, no pulling of the guards or tackles or moving guys around. Just straight ahead drive blocks by all the guys up front. you got to believe that if they go anyplace else, there's Brock. Five yards of carry, folks. He scores here, it could hurt his average. Up the middle, Forsey, up and over, touchdown. Wow. <laughs> That's a 360. And look at the Bronco fans in that stands. How about that? I mean, I'll tell you what, it's pretty impressive, all this orange down here today. And they're excited right now. Their team is up 13-0. Brock, watch him do the 360 here, straight up, over, lands on his feet. Better than landing on his head or his shoulders where he's ended up the last few times he's tried that leap. So now Nick Kalaikai will come on for the point after. And it is up, and it is good. So we've got seven minutes and 34 seconds to play here in the first quarter, and the Boise State Broncos have jumped to a 14-0 lead over the Wolfpack. We'll be back on the Broncos Television Network. 
Well, stay tuned towards the end of our broadcast for the Idaho Lottery Lucky Play of the Game. We'll feature one of today's top plays, sponsored by the Idaho Lottery, encouraging players everywhere to score big, the Idaho Lottery. And, of course, when you're down here in Nevada, you get an in on your mountain. <laughs> All right, Tyler Jones kicking off. Goodbye. This one maybe through the uprights. It is into the stands. Just boomed it. 65-yarder. Wow. <laughs> 75 in the air. All right. Nevada's had the ball in just one play, folks. Quentin Michael forced a fumble of a Flowers catch after a nice pass by Zach Threadgill. Julius Roberts recovered, and the Broncos took it in for a touchdown. BSU leads at 14 to nothing here in Reno. Yeah, got to be scary that it's 14 to nothing already. Time of possession. One play. <laughs> kind of in favor of the Broncos, I would think. Milton the ball carry, and he doesn't go anyplace. Mitchell the ball carrier. That's actually B.J. Mitchell, so. Changing it up already, yep. honestly. Matt Milton's been carrying the ball. He's had a no couple game. problems the last few games. Bronco scoring drive as Nevada goes without a huddle. Come out here quick. No gain. It's second down and 10. Zach Threadgo calling the play right at the line of scrimmage. Flips it out to Burleson. There's a flag down. Burleson breaks a couple of, uh, makes a couple of moves anyway. Gets it out to the 25, but let's check the flag. Remember, Nate Burleson needs 12 receptions here today to set a single season NCAA mark. Offside, Boise State. So the Broncos lined up offside. It was only about a five-yard gain, so you would think that they would turn down the play, take the penalty, and keep the down. And that's yeah, what they'll absolutely. do. All right, Tom Scott Motors, starting lineups for the University of Nevada. There you see the offensive front. Pretty good size, 6'5", six, 6'5", five, six, five down there at the tackles. And then we talked about Matt Milton supposed to be in there, but right now uh, Mitchell's in there playing instead. So we'll see. I don't know if uh, Milton's hurt or if maybe Mitchell played better this week in practice. I don't know. Second down and five. The ball at the 25-yard line. It looks like Threadgill now changing off. Mitchell up the middle. Mitchell's got a first down after the 31, maybe the 32-yard line. B.J. Mitchell. He's a freshman, too. He's out of Loomis, California. Let's take a look at the Tom Scott Motors starting lineup defensively for the Broncos. Roberts, Jerry Allen, and Bobby Hammer getting the start at right end instead of tackle. Berger, Akko, and Avalos, very mobile linebacker crew, and, you know, just fixtures back there in that defensive backfield. Michael, Nurse, Franklin, and Brown, they've been there all year. First down play for Threadgill. And we got a flag already. And I think we have some motion. Broncos a little confused on defense, but I think that's because there was some motion in the offensive line for the pack. So a legal procedure against Nevada. That'll back them up five yards. You see there's a flag by our Idaho Lottery clock box in the uh, upper right or left-hand corner of your screen today. Compliments of the Idaho Lottery. Just a nice day here in Reno, Nevada for a football game, and the Broncos have uh, jumped out to a 14-0 lead. First quarter. From the shotgun, Threadgill. Looking deep for Burleson, not there. He had some pretty good coverage by Quentin Michael. Quentin Michael was there, West Nurse came over to help out, so both safeties were right there with Burleson. Yeah, number 80 is going to get a lot of attention today from that defensive backfield. When you have 131 receptions to your credit, you're going to attract a lot of white jerseys. So it'll be second down and 15. Rolls right, Redgill does, looking, throwing, knocked away at the last second by Chris Carr, who is from Reno, McQueen High School down here. Jeff Caves on the sideline, what's up? Well, you guys were already seeing that Chris Tormey has influenced the Nevada program similar ways he did at Idaho. 
What Chris likes to do is confuse you through making you think about substitutions, running in tight ends, running out wide receivers, and vice versa. A lot of motion, and so Boise State's countering with a chess game and making them jump. It's not the most physical game, but he likes to play with your mind. Wayne? All right, Jeff, third down and 15 for the pack. Four receivers in the pattern. Broncos coming with a delayed blitz. Throws over the middle, complete the Flowers. And Flowers is going to be stopped at the 40-yard line. That's going to be two yards shy of a first down. Is Tormey in a gambling mood down 14-0? Or will he kick it away? It depends on the spot, I think. If they mark it back at the 40 where they are, that, that's almost a full two yards. It's just over the 40-yard line. Uh, he's in a gambling mood. He's going to go for it on fourth down. Down 14-0. Nope, he's changed his mind. He just left that offense out there long enough to maybe confuse the defense. That's the Tormy way. But look out for a fake here. They only need about a yard. And it's a booming kick. Gilligan back, back, back to the 11-yard line. Gilligan to the outside. Sees nothing but blue jerseys. What will he do? He gets it out to the 22. He just says, you know what? Enough of this fancy dancy. Let's just go forward. And an excellent job by Julius Brown to not block the guy in the back. All right. Broncos lead at 14-0. They'll have the football at the 22. We'll be back after this. Coming up later on our broadcast, we're going to show you the Jiffy Loop drive of the game. This special feature is brought to you by Jiffy Loop, your locally well-oiled machine, Jiffy Loop. Wayne Dezubak, Larry Pulaski with you. We're back here at Mackey Stadium in Reno, Nevada. They play on field turf now. Years ago, they had grass down here. Decided to move over to the field turf, which is just pretty much kind of like what Boise State put in, except it's green. It's green. <laughs> Broncos first and 10 at the 22. Back to pass, Dinwiddie. Throwing for Billy Wingfield, and he drops it. And he may have been, you know, it's tough because he had double coverage and somebody coming in front of him, so... Somehow, though, it got to his hands, and he couldn't find the handle. Well, Dinwiddie's in tune with Billy Wingfield, obviously, this year. We've seen him throw to number eight a lot. Matt Strophus was running right down the middle of the field all by himself. I'm sure Matt will come back and say, look at me. I mean, he had nobody near him. So the Broncos going for the long ball on first down. They got David Michael at a running back now. Blitz. Pass. All over from tennis for Tim Gilligan. Pretty good coverage there as well. But again, you mentioned the blitz, Larry, and that's pretty much what uh, forced Dinwiddie to throw a little quick. Dinwiddie takes the deep five-step drop. You can see he throws that ball maybe a little bit before he wants to because Chris Berry was all over. It. So when you live by the pass, you die by the pass. And the Broncos right now are facing the third down and 10 after two incompletions. And David Michaels in at the tailback position. From the shotgun, Ryan Dinwiddie. Steps up into the pocket, has a lot of running room. Could get the first down and a lot more. Dinwiddie to the 50. He's down to the 45 to the 44-yard line. Ryan Dinwiddie pulling up Art Hendricks. It did look like there was a one in front of that seven there for just a minute. Dinwiddie not knowing to run a lot because he throws the ball so well. You Gets mentioned a moment ago that Strophus is wide open down the middle, Larry. Look at this middle open up for Dinwiddie. Yeah, all Ryan can see is just a whole lot of green and nobody out there. He made a nice nifty little move there and then kind of tripped. I was wondering if he might have hurt that ankle a little bit on that cut, but he looks like he's walking fine. I think he tried to make too many cuts, got too fancy there, but Ryan Dinwiddie with a huge third down play for Boise State. Dinwiddie now 36 yards on that play. Looking deep, looking for Lou Fanuki. Fanuki goes by his man, but couldn't quite get there. Well, they're airing it out early, aren't they? Sure are. Woo. Man, I don't think I've seen... Coach Hawk and Coach Chris Peterson make this kind of play call this early in the game all year long. They are going for blood. They're up 14-0. They figure if they get in the end zone here, make it 21-zip, that Nevada will be toast. At I'm least not that's their plan. I'm not second-guessing his play calling either. I like it. I think it's great. Again, David Michael, this looks like it's his Siri. Brock Forsey has not been in there from the get-go. Dinwiddie over the middle, complete to Jay Swilly. Swilly puts his head down and tries to get a couple of more yards. Nice open field tackle that time by 
Dominic Cruz. He's tackling a big guy, too. Swilly's a load to bring down sometimes. And Swill kind of sucked his hips up, tried to run over him. That was a good collision. Well, Cruz is only 5'9", so, I mean, he did a good, but he's a 195-pounder, so, I mean, he's got some weight behind him. But you're right, Swilly's a big guy, and Swilly figured he couldn't put the move on him, so he put the helmet down, and the Broncos are faced with the third down and about three. You can see the clock. Three and a half to go here in the first period. So far, it's been all Boise State. Brock Forsey in there. Cuts for the first down to the 30-yard line. But Brock Forsey, in that play, is exhausted before he ever gets the ball. He shifts out of his tailback position to the left wing, then he goes in motion, then he backs up in his motion, and then he gets the handoff on a little bit of a delay counter. And he's coming off. He's so tired. It's a lot of work in that play. Made me tired just watching him as we take a look at the Sinclair ticker. Some scores from today or some matchups today. We're playing pretty early, you know. It's yeah, we are. Noon here on the Pacific Time Zone. This is the only stadium that, in the WAC that does not have lights. David Michael David up the middle for about four. Again, that middle has been pretty much suspect for Nevada. The Broncos have been able to get four or five yards uh, at whim. Well, and then what happens, Brock Forsey bounces one to the outside when they start sucking into the middle and they lose contain. Then he pops it to the outside, and Forsey checks back into the game. On the play. Brock Forsey, 12 carries, 59 yards, two touchdowns. We're in the first quarter. Now Brock Forsey setting up outside. Now he goes in motion. <laughs> there, there you go. Dinwiddie then he gets hands the ball. it off to Forsey. Forsey's got a huge oh, block look at that downfield. Block. Wow. Unbelievable. Who was that? College was and that David college Michael and David both. Michael? Unbelievable. Un that's a great block. And the Broncos got a first and goal to go again. What downfield blocking. Here's a replay of it from our end zone camera. Brock taking it on the motion. Let's see if we can see these great blocks. There's one by David Michael. There's the other one by College. Look at that. That is a decleater. That was a decleater. That's unbelievable. You just don't see that kind of stuff. Handoff. David Michael hitting the backfield. Nowhere to go. He maybe loses the yard. You know, Michael's probably going, now when Brock's got him, there's lots of room. How come there's nothing there when I get it? Timing is a very important thing in football. <laughs> you need to be in on the right plays. <laughs> exactly. No gain on the play. Actually, no gain on the play, so it'll still be second down and goal. We talked about the red zone, wow. and there you go. Look at this now. That's updated red zone stat. Not too shabby. Yep. And end around. This is Billy Wingfield looking for some blocking. Wingfield down to the five-yard line. Gain of three. It'll be third and goal now. You know, we talk about that end zone thing of the uh, red zone. Boise State had kneeled down twice to end games inside the red zone. If you could take those out, because, I mean, if you're not trying to score, you shouldn't count against you. Again, the fly motion. This time they do hand it off to Wingfield coming around on the counter action. Had a little bit of a blocker out there, but good job by Nevada of bringing that thing out to the sidelines. Well, all year this has been two down territory for Boise State. Third and goal from the five. Gilligan in motion. Inside handoff. And the Broncos are, well, Strophus keeps it going. Gets down to the four-yard line. I thought they were going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage, but Matt Strophus kept it moving, kept his legs going. But it'll be fourth down, and the Broncos are going to go for the field goal. Here comes Nick Kalaikai. Again, Strophus that time sitting up at the H back on the left side of the formation. They try to come back with the counter. And Strophus is strong enough to be able to ward off the first couple of blockers or tacklers, but not the rest. Yeah, the hole was actually right up the middle. Strophus kicked it a little bit outside. That hole was right up the middle. Kalaikai Nick Kalaikai, 21-yard field goal attempt. And it is up, and it is good. And the Broncos have tacked on three more here as the first period ends. That's the end of the first quarter. So the first quarter is ended, and the Boise State Broncos have owned it. The Boise State Broncos leading at 17 to nothing here at Mackey Stadium on a 21-yard field goal from Nick Kalaika and two touchdowns from Brock Forsey, who now has 78 yards rushing in the first quarter. We'll be back. Well, 
But folks, it's time to gear up. Get the completely new Bronco logo to pair with the Boise State Bronco Shop. Your choice of new Bronco logos on name brand gear. And see the new valued price Bronco wear line. You can shop at the store in the Student Union on campus in Boise or save some time and travel ordering online at www.broncoshop.com. Gear up with the Broncos today. Tyler Jones kickoff, taking about five yards deep, and look out! Tyler Jones trying to make the stop. He can't do it, and Terrell Hall makes the stop, but a great run back that time by Bucky Lewis, Buddy Lewis. That's the best return on the Broncos all year long. The Broncos do a pretty good job, and he was way deep in the end zone, about six yard deep. They break the wedge down, but there's a tackle there that was missed. And then Terrell Hall has to come from a long way out to save that one. Terrell Hall did a good job, took a good angle, showed some good speed. And so all of a sudden, the Nevada Wolfpack is that Bronco territory at the 49-yard line, thanks to that great return by Buddy Lewis. Zach Threadgill, the quarterback. Look out, this is going to be a fake. Passing and looking for Burleson. And there's going to be a flag. Julius Brown got beat, but you know what? The pass was so bad, and he just kind of turned around. He would have been okay. He might have made the interception. He made up ground fast on Burleson, and then that pass was really nothing more than a duck. Well, it was Streelman, the tight end, that came on the tight end around pass, I guess. I don't think I've ever seen that play before. Yeah, neither did I until just then. That'll be 15 from the line of scrimmage. So first down at the 34. You know, and Julius Brown knows that, so he's going going in there. He just gonna his whole mindset, don't let him catch the ball for a touchdown. Well, had me worried from the get-go because Julius Brown was one-on-one -on -one with Burleson all by himself with no safety help. So he was on an island anyway. So it's first down. And the ball now at the 34-yard line. Threadgill rolling right. Let's it go again for Burleson. And knocked away. Again, Julius Brown to hit him in the back. Jeff Caves is on the sideline, Jeffrey. You know, Chris Tormey has a long history with Boise State. Chris said he takes this game personally. It's a big rivalry. He's bringing a little tradition with him. Look at all the Nevada players. You'll see them with blue and orange all over their seat, all over their cleats and their belts and on their wrists. Chris is even wearing his blue and orange bracelet. I think it comes right off of a jersey from the tackling dummy that they use during the week, and then they tear it up. He's taking it personal, Wayne. All right, thank you very much, Jeff. Second down after that long pass attempt. And as you can see now, Nevada down 17 points, trying to air it out. Threadgill over the middle. Intercepted, then got it. He's got he it. Does. Gabe Franklin with his eighth interception. <laughs> Tremendous athletic move by Gabe Franklin. He jumped very high in the air, tipped the pass up, landed flat on his back, and somehow managed to corral that ball. Wow, that was a great interception. Thought he had it clean at first, then fobbled it and then caught it on the ground so Boise State will have the football when we come back. Boise State up 17-0 here in Reno on the Bronco Television Network. All right, we are back here. Wayne DeZubak, Larry Pulaski. Here's the interception by Gabe Franklin. He's on Burleson. There's the tip. Lands flat on his back. Bounces up again and he still grabs it. <laughs> that was a great interception by Gabe Franklin just as Nate Burleson seemed to have Broken free and gotten wide open. Tim Gilligan in motion. Brock Forsey up the middle. Forsey. I tell you, the only guy that got in his way that time was the umpire. I think he wanted to kick it outside, but the umpire was there. He still gets 12 yards and a first down. First quarter stats, uh, a little bit in favor of the Broncos. Time of possession, look at that, 12-12 to 248. Broncos with 175 yards in total offense to 27, Larry. You know, 12 minutes to two and at almost three minutes is amazing. That, that, is, that is truly a stat that does mean something. First down run by Brock Forsey. <laughs> Dinwiddie throws complete. It's Gilligan again. He gets a first down. He's going to get a gain of 11-yard line. So Tim Gilligan 
a pretty good target. I mean, uh, really, Ryan looked for him a couple of three times today. Is there anybody on this Bronco offense that has quicker feet than Tim Gilligan? I don't think so. Maybe Brock, maybe D. Mike in some cases, but Gilligan can absolutely cut on a dime. First down for Boise State out of the 43-yard line. Swilly in motion. Handed off to Swilly. Swilly, outside he goes. Cuts it up the middle. Swilly to the 40-yard line and down. A gain of 15 yards for Jay Swilly. Well, that was, a, again, that fly sweep. They have done a lot of that today. And I think they've, they've handed it off more than I've seen them do in a long time. So they obviously think they can beat them to the outside. This one cuts up inside a little bit. A great job again with the blockers. Getting the hole and Swill does a great job of following them. Some nice cuts, very patient. Doesn't try to make too much happen too soon. Waits for college and Forzy to make those good blocks down there. Yeah, you're right. The key word you used there was patience. He did show some. Dinwiddie has pressure from the outside. Throws, knocked down, incomplete. Nice defensive play that time by Allie Jones. And I don't see any flags. We see one back in the backfield. Uh, something happened after the throw. Wingfield, the intended receiver. So we'll check it out. You either got rough in the pass or a holding one of the two. That's where it's thrown. And I didn't see. So you have roughing the passer. Yeah, Dinwiddie, I saw him getting up off the ground. I, I was watching the flight of the ball. I didn't see what happened to him. But he was sitting on his backside, so somebody hit him. Must have been Corey Jackson, number 94, who was the only guy in the backfield. So they'll mark it off, and the Broncos continue to march forward towards the end zone of the Wolfpack, which they've done quite a bit here today. Here's a shot. Ball's off. Yeah, that's the, that's the call right there. All right, back four seed. Cuts free. He's got one man to beat. Puts his head down. He's to the three. Brock Forsey having a huge day here today. And I can't tell you what his rushing yards are because the guys upstairs have got this down to 14 carries for 29 yards now. So it's wrong. So we'll keep checking on how many yards he's racking up. He's got to be over 100 yards now. Now they've got him for 91 now. Where is it? 14 carries for 91 yards. There you go. So they got it changed. All right. Now it's 113. So that must have been before that rush. Okay. So he's got 113 yards. Brock also with two touchdowns. And once again, the Broncos have a first and goal from the three yard line. And Brock Forsey hits his own man, tries to bounce it outside. And after he hit his own man, it was all over because Corey Jackson was right there to bring him down. Now that's going to be a backed up all the way to the nine. Corey Jackson, a big guy. He's listed as a tight end, but obviously moved over to the defensive side of things. Well, they've got a couple of pretty big, good tight ends, so I'm sure they need a little shoring up on that defensive front for the Wolfpack. And he's done a pretty good job. He's not a shore up. He's a big old fix because he's 6'7", 240 pounds. He's a, that's a lot of shoring. He's a giant. So it's still going to be goal to go, but now instead of being from inside to five, they're at the nine-yard line, and Ryan Dinwiddie calls timeout. So Ryan Dinwiddie calls the Broncos' first timeout of the day. Broncos have a second down and goal to go, 12.33 to go here in the first half, and Boise State up 17 to nothing. Ryan will make the trip over there to talk things over with his coaching staff and also B.J. Rohde. Two quarterbacks. Uh, Mike Sanford in there as well, so it's just a big old quarterback convention. Isn't it? I think that's every quarterback they brought, so there couldn't be any more over here. <laughs> Brock Forsey. Now they've got him at 107 yards rushing, so I'm not sure what they're doing. Well, he lost, he lost some yards right. on that last Everybody. carry. So. You know, the next live Bronco television event's going to come up Saturday, December 14th. The Bronco men's basketball team going to be up in Moscow to take on the Idaho Vandals. This live Bronco television event airs at 11 o'clock. That's right, 11 p.m. right here on the Bronco television network. It's Midnight Madness with the Broncos and the Vandals at the Kippy Dome. I guess they've got some uh, uh, winter graduation. Yeah, there was a obviously a scheduling error or an oversight. Two events were scheduled into the... Uh, hold to uh, the uh, arena Kibbe Dome at the same time 
I can't remember what they call the Peterson Arena or something. They've got a new name for it up there. Well, we'll figure it out when we get up there at 11 o'clock on the 14th. All right, there's the rushing yards. Woefully in favor of Boise State, 162 to 7. Second down and goal for Boise State. Lots of motion by Jay Swilly. He's got to be getting tired. Dinwiddie hands it off to Forsey. There's a flag down as Forsey goes inside the five down to the two-yard line. So well, let's check it out. Probably going to be a hold on college on the left side of the formation. That flag came out as soon as the ball was snapped. Well, I tell you what, the Broncos hurting themselves here. They get lost a few yards on first down. Now they're going to lose a bunch of yards. It's going to be a procedure. Well, why didn't they late. stop it then? I don't know. Yeah, I agree with you. Should blow in the whistle if it's procedure. Now you can see the hole that uh, Larry was referring to on the left side, but they call procedure, which, of course, for Broncos' sake, is only five yards. Well, they're going backwards at a rapid pace in this drive. First thing that's gone wrong for Boise State all day, and it's been the penalty now. Penalty, procedure penalty. The second and 14. So now you got second and goal from the 14-yard line. Ball on the Nevada 14-yard line. Donnie Heck is in at one of the running back positions. They fake it, throw it to Heck. Heck up the middle, Heck down to the one-yard line. So Donnie Heck is in the ball game for a purpose, and that was to catch the ball and get it down to the one-yard line. It'll be third and goal from the one. Donnie Heck, a guy that has his trouble in practice sometimes catching the ball, but you know in the game situation, he's done a pretty good job of it. We saw him catch a pass in Boise and take it into the end zone. A, a play very similar to that one right there, and he did a good job getting down to the one-yard line. Now you're looking at two-down territory. I guarantee you this close to Broncos field, if they can't make a touchdown in two, they should spurn the field goal. I guarantee you if they don't make it here, they'll go for it on fourth. But they hand it to Brock Forsey, and he doesn't make it. He got up in the air. So let's see if I'm right. Brock Forsey got way up in the air, and they've seen that before Nevada has, so they were ready for it. Good defensive line surge. They got created big pile, and then when Brock goes over the top, he hits the pile first. And if you hit the pile first, bad things are going to happen. Broncos actually lost about a half a yard, so it's pretty much just right on the one-yard line on a fourth and goal to go for Boise State. And now a timeout. So Broncos use their second timeout. Boise State. Ryan Dinway didn't even turn around before he wanted a timeout. Obviously, whatever didn't what he saw, he didn't like at all. Boise State up 17 nothing here in Reno. The Broncos trying to go 11 and one on the year, 8 and 0 in the WAC. Brock Forsey having a big game. He's got two touchdowns, already over 100 yards rushing, at 107 on 17 carries. You know, and one stat that I think is important, too, that we look at is the way that the receiving has been spread out. When you look at four different people for the Broncos that have caught the ball, Gilligan's got two, Wingfield has two, Heck and Swilly each with one reception. A little different philosophy overall than what Nevada has with the Burleson and Threadgill situation. Ryan Dinwiddie right now, 6-9 and nine passing for 83 yards. Zach Threadgill, 2 of 6 with one interception. Gabe Franklin coming up with his eighth interception of the year. Let's go down to Jeff Caves. Jeff, what's going on on the sidelines? Well, I'll tell you, a lot of wounded for Nevada. They've got linebackers in and out of the game. They're down to freshmen. Uh, the kid Jackson that you're talking about is actually a basketball player who had his eligibility exhausted. Normally, he only comes in and field gold and PAT block. Now he's out there at defensive end. I think the troops are pretty depleted and they're pretty much putting band-aids on it. Wayne? All right, let's see if they can put a band-aid to stop this wound right here as the Boise State Broncos going for it on fourth and goal from the one yard line. And we got a flag thrown in the backfield. Tim Gilligan had just gone in motion when we had flags thrown. Let's see what this is. Illegal substitution against Nevada. That'll make it half the distance to the goal line. So is there 12 guys out there? Yep, they still have 12 out there. 
There's 12 they, still. Yeah, there's still, still 12. 12. They're sure not, they're not sure who's going to come off. So somebody's got to come off. And here they go. So Chris, now they're Chris Handy is the guy that's. Well, he's the one that came off. off. You would assume he's the one that wasn't supposed to be happening. At any rate, now the Broncos get a break because now it's a fourth down and goal from the foot line instead of the one yard line. Big difference here. Brock Forsey in for the touchdown. Skips in. Not a problem. Up the middle. Brock Forsey is third touchdown of the ball game, and the Broncos are up 23 to nothing. Well, that may not seem like a whole lot of half a yard penalty, but that's a big deal when you're down to the goal line like that because the defense is so far into their own end zone that any push by the offensive front creates an, an instant touchdown. And Brock didn't have to really get hit very hard on this one, if at all. Nope, he thought about jumping, but he skipped instead. Three touchdowns today for Brock Forsey and Nikolai Kayan for the point after attempt. B.J. Rohde, the holder, it's up, it's good. And the Broncos have jumped to a 24-0 lead here in Reno, Nevada. We are early in the second quarter. We'll be Stay tuned at halftime for the Treasure Valley Dodge Dealers Halftime Report. We'll have all the scores and highlights of today's college action. It's the Dodge Halftime Report coming up in just a few minutes here on the Bronco Television Network. Randy the Zubank, Larry Pulaski, Jeff Caves on the sideline with you as Tyler Jones getting ready to kick off one more time. Buddy Lewis deep along with Ronnie Hardiman. And Hardiman will take it five yards deep and he will come out of the end zone up the middle. And Hardiman. A nice return up to the 27-yard line. Wolfpack doing a pretty good job on the return. Some of the best that I've seen all year against this Boise State special team. Well, they're bringing it out of the end zone. So many teams, when they get three or four yards deep in the end zone, they just drop to the knee, and they don't try to bring it out. He's Here, a good five yards deep when he yep. brings it out. And this wedge, it's being broken, but there's still some seams in there. Now you saw a little bit of a missed tackle right there that could have made a big difference. <laughs> But Nevada has the football, which they haven't had very much of here in this ball game so far today. Time of possession, way in favor of Boise State. Hand off to Mitchell. Mitchell kicks it outside. Nice little gain out to the 35-yard box. Another player was slow to get up, but he's okay, I think. Big offensive lineman yes. kind of testing that left leg. For Nevada, as Jeff just mentioned a little while ago, injuries already plaguing the Wolfpack. Yes. Wow. You talk about total domination so far, huh? 35 to 9 as far as the number of plays. That's why the time of possession is so lopsided. R.J. Marsh comes in at the last second. Mitchell cutting through the defense, has the first down. Quinn Michael finally makes a stop along with Andy Avalos, but not before a seven-yard gain and a first down. Well, Jeff Caves talked about how banged up Nevada is. The defensive line for the Broncos is pretty banged up, too. Yeah. Fernando Yanez is getting some time in there. Paul Allen checking out of the game right now. All that personnel check it in. Three wide receivers to the near side, two to the left side. So five receivers, and the Broncos, Paul Allen coming back in after checking out. So a little confusion on the Broncos' part. There's the flag, and Zach Threadgill will stop the play. So the Broncos weren't sure, and again, I, you know, I'm sorry. i got to say this. I, I don't like what Dormy does with that late substitution. I think it should be outlawed. I think he really does cross the line, although it's against them this time. So it's against Nevada. But I really don't like it. He got five guys coming on at the last second. Now, this is a little better. They got three guys coming in, three guys coming out. You got plenty of time to figure out what you want to do defensively. Right now, if there's a time to run the ball with Yanez and Guerrero, who are inexperienced at the defensive yeah, front, yeah. this would be the time to do it. And you got Bertelson on Julius Brown, who's had a little bit of trouble with Nate Bertelson in the short time that Nevada's had the football. Everybody has trouble with Burles. I know. Did you have the middle? There's it's a flash. Mask. It's going to be a face mask it's against Boise State. I should be in a burden. Looks like Guerrero right. got him by the headgear. Let go real quick. But still, you know, it's a good call by the official. Let's see if it's inadvertent or a 15-yarder. He didn't get much of it. Should only be five, but we'll see what the referees decide here. 
Isaiah Ross, a big offensive lineman for the Wolfpack, checked out of the game. He's limping over to the trainer's table. We know what it is, but not an indication whether it's a major or a minor. And it's going to be the minor version. So a five-yarder. That'll make it first down and ten, so we should pretty much come back to where we were. Here's Isaiah Ross, 6'3", 318-pound junior out of Sacramento. All right, first down and ten. Ball up the 48-yard line. Excuse me, 44. Threadgill fakes one way, goes the other way. Hits his big tight end. He's out of bounds, but that's a nice little play right there. Eric Strillman, the 6'5 senior out of Bellflower, California with a catch. Wayne, why don't we take a look at our Lexus BSU trivia, who holds a single-game record for tackles for loss. Single game record for tackles for loss. That is our Lexus BSU trivia question. Hmm. I'm going to be thinking about that one. Nice game that time of about eight yards. Hand off to Mitchell. Mitchell trying to kick it outside. Then Michael brings him down at the line of scrimmage. But Michael stayed with the program. Michael on the tackle. Yeah, once Q gets a hold of your legs, you're usually coming down. You know, you look at Quentin Michael, he is just so physical. I mean, he's got that body in tune. He's been really hitting the weights. He is a physical specimen. He really is. Watching him running up and down the field before the uh, game started in his T-shirt and, and game pants on. I mean, he is a stud. Yeah, you don't want to mess with him, that's for sure. Third down and one. Mitchell bounces off one guy. And Mitchell. I tell you what, Tony Altieri missed first the tackle down. in the backfield, and Mitchell gets the first down to the 45-yard line of Boise State. Oh, I think we may be seeing why Mitchell's in there instead of Milton. This kid is running hard. He's, he's not going down on the first hit. Tony kind of had a tough he's angle to take to get to him, but did make contact in the backfield. He's got a few yards, 47 rushes, averages four yards a carry. Those are not bad numbers. I mean, the guy that's averaging four yards should get more touches, don't you think? You bet. They got the five receivers in there now, and Zach Gill will from the shotgun on first down at the 44-yard line of Boise State. Threadgill. Going to run it. And he's going to get close to a first down before he goes out of bounds. He'll be just shy. But again, he spreads the field out. You spread the defense out. And then when you got nobody open, you've got plenty of room to run. That's what Ryan did when he found a little while ago. Broncos secondary with good coverage on the receivers. You can see somebody gets out of their pass rush lane, though, and that's why there's such a big hole. Avalos can't quite get there. Second and three. Actually, I tell you what, that Broncos, I thought, got a good mark. I thought he really got a nine-yard gain, and instead it was only a seven-yard gain. So it'll be second down and three. Threadgill looking for Burleson. And Julius Brown apparently going for a pass interference. Julius was in pretty good shape, but I think he got his right arm out a little bit. Let's see if we can see this at the end. Julius has been on an island with this guy three or four different times today. Watch the right arm. I think they, that's what they call his right arm and the left arm of Burleson getting tangled up. Julius is pretty upset about that. I don't know that he uh, felt that it was either way. But they're going to have the ball now. Nevada is at the 22-yard line. So the pack moving it via penalties, via the ground. Nice little pass to their tight end, Streelman. Have a little bit of a drive going here. First and 10 at the 22-yard line. Mitchell. Boy, he's met right there, Boise State. Getting the job done is yeah, Fernando Yanez. Now, Fernando that time made that tackle from his knees and then was strong enough to be able to finish it off. Let's go down to Jeff Caves on the sideline. Jeff? You know, in talking to Boise State before the game, the game plan to defend Burleson was to press him. They hadn't seen teams put cover corners up in his face and play physical with him. That's not what's going on. Julius Brown's playing soft. 
Another guy that they'd like to get on him is Quentin Michael. And then, of course, anybody else that's in the corner or safety position. So see how they play him the rest of the game. Wait. Now yeah, they're playing him pretty soft right now. Second down and 10. Fred Gill looking in the end zone. Overthrows his intended receiver there, Tim Fleming. Quentin Michael is coming over to give some help to Gabe Franklin, but Fleming somehow had gotten wide open for a moment, but the Broncos closed pretty well. It's kind of an interesting game plan by Chris Tormey and their offensive coordinator today to, with who they're throwing to. A lot of what I saw on film during the week was Burleson and crossing routes, over the middle, post routes, uh, delays, all kinds of different things, even a wide screen to them, uh, but I haven't seen any of that today. All they've done is go down the field and try to throw deep. We'll see what happens now. Maybe because they got behind so quickly. I don't know. Could have changed it. His thinking. The pass intended for Burleson overthrown. It'll be fourth down and 10. And obviously down 24 nothing. And at the 22 yard line of Boise State, you're going to stick with the offense and go for it. Are they going to try a field goal? Or you're going to bring in your kicker. Well, which they I, do. Down 24 nothing. I'll tell you what, I think as a coach, I'd go for it. They are. They bring in Damon Fine. Remember, Andy Hesser, the holder, is a quarterback. I'm not sure if he's the backup quarterback or the third teamer, but he is a quarterback. Okay, watch the fake here at the 22-yard line. They need 10 yards. The hold is up. The kick is low, and it hits the bar. In no good. Man, that was a line drive, low, double, off the bar. So the score remains 24-0 Boise State as the Broncos stop. The Nevada Wolf back again. We'll be back in the Bronco Television Network. It is a beautiful day in Reno, Nevada. Wayne is back there. Pulaski with you. When last we left you, our Lexus trivia question was up in the air. Who holds the single game record for tackles for a loss? I actually got this one right without cheating. You did. John Rady against Utah State in 82. Eight tackles for loss. And he went on to a fairly decent career of 10 years with the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> John, I didn't forget you, man. I had you. Had it peg. Brock Forsey looking for some running room. Cuts it back and then cuts it up. So there was nothing there. He cut his losses, took a yard gain, and said, let's try down two. Huh? There was a lot of cutting on that, but he basically got <laughs> sliced and diced by the Nevada defense. Broncos again trying that middle, and I think that uh, Nevada has made some adjustments in the middle, and it's not as soft as it once was. Brock Forsey with 180 yards rushing. From the shotgun on second down and 10, actually no gain on that play. I'm going to hand it off to Brock up the middle, so the Broncos still think there's something there. And that time, they were right for two yards. George Cordova made the stop. And Brock Forsey, a workhorse here today, early. Broncos got off to a quick start with 17 first quarter points. Another touchdown here in the second quarter. Ryan Dinwiddie now faced with third and seven. Where's the ball? Well, it was snapped low. Dinwiddie finally got a hold of it, but... I never saw the ball snapped. I'm sorry. Yeah, it... it well, it kind of one-hopped its way uh, to Dinwiddie. See, I'm going to have to watch the replay. See, it never really got out from under center. Dinwiddie okay. goes and picks it up, and then they're blitzing. And that play just was, that series was a disaster from the start. So Keith Shuttler, who is averaging 41 yards a kick, who? and this is uh, something that's a rarity. What's his name? Yeah, Shuttler. You bet. He only, Broncos punting 2.4 punts per game. That's the lowest in the nation. Okay, Shuttler's kick. Taking a little bit of a Bronco bounce there, but only to the 45-yard line. So not a great kick by Shuttler. And Nevada will have it again in Bronco territory at the 45-yard line. We'll be back. Boise State leads at 24-0 here in Reno. Well, there you see the story with 4.59 to go in the first half. Boise State ranked 21 in the ESPN Coaches Poll, 23 in the AP Poll, leading 24-0 here in Reno, but the pack has the ball at the Bronco 45-yard line. Some other scores, thanks to our Sinclair ticker, the Sinclair scoreboard. Wow, what happened to Air Force? Woo. 
Yeah, what a fall from grace. Big game for BYU and Utah right there being played up in Salt Lake City. 6-0. Cougars lead it. Threadgill out to Bertelson. And just timing wasn't there. Threadgill's not really having a good day throwing the ball. He's, he overthrew Burleson on that out route in the last series. Too much with that one. So they're not in tune yet. But I watched last week the second half of Fresno State. They got in tune. Well, they scored 20 points in the fourth quarter against Fresno second State. Up. So this is a team that, you know, don't be lulled to sleep if you're the Bronco defense. They can score in a hurry. Mitchell, oh, excuse me, that's Milton now. So Milton's checked in. The first time we've seen him today. Both those running backs, Mitchell and Milton, just freshmen. So they're going to be around for a while. And I like Mitchell, what I saw of him. He looks like he's a pretty good runner. Strong, makes pretty good decisions. Doesn't dance around. Third down conversions on the day. 60% is the goal of an offense. They're down at nine. And there's a little procedure penalty. Zach Threadgill, I think, was changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Well, Streelman was the tight end on the left side of the formation. That couldn't hold. So now you're looking at third down and 14. Watch the tight end on the right side of the screen. Just couldn't hold his water. <laughs> That's then, the worst feeling, isn't it? And then Hammer gives him a forearm shiver and sends him into the back. Of Just to make sure in case the officials didn't see it. Get back over there. That they realized there was contact. All right. Both teams with five penalties in this ball game. Third down and 14 now. Threadgill goes to the shotgun. Broncos coming with a blitz up the middle. Threadgill throwing incomplete, intended for Flowers at one hop. Nice scoop. And he trapped it, so it'll be fourth down. Flowers was open, but he didn't have enough yardage for the first down anyway. So I'm not sure why you throw that pass. So now it'll be fourth down and 14, and you would think that at this point they're going to go for it. Well, they are. Their offense is still on the field. We'll see if that changes. But he just aims it a little bit too much, keeps it low. Now the punting team comes onto the field. Now we'll see what they can do here, see if they can pin the Broncos down, get the field possession. Jones, Jones, Jones standing at about his 36-yard line. Low snap, picks it up. It's blocked. Tony Altari. Tony Altari with the block. The Broncos trying to go with the scoop. They've got the ball. But never could kind of scoop it to take it in. But Tony Altari all alone comes in with a big block. Well, he came right up the middle. I'm not sure anybody even touched him. If they did, there wasn't much of a touch. Cam Merritt ended up with the ball, but look, Tony Altieri come in here. That's a big old senior defensive tackle coming right there. <laughs> and he fell. <laughs> Good job, Tony. I'm not laughing at you, brother, but that's a great block. There are a lot Tony of white jerseys down there, but nobody could get to the scoop. Nobody ever accused him of being a running back, okay? Tony. That was a great block. He's happy with the block, and he turns to the Bronco faithful all in orange, and they kind of bow. Good job. Broncos up 24-0 here. 3.37 to go in the first half. And Tony Alteri has given the Boise State the Broncos at the 28-yard line. Brock Forsey now in the end sweep. Forsey, he will take it. And he puts his head down for about four yards to the 25-yard line. That's a good decision by Brock. There's a time to wait for your blockers, and then there's a time to make a decision. And he made the decision to take it up hit somebody as hard as he could and pick up what he had. Brock Force, almost four. Yeah, yeah, he has he's done a great job. He's got about 115 yards rushing here and three touchdowns. And as I mentioned, we, as you know, are in the first half still. 21 carries, 115 yards, and three touchdowns for Brock Forsey. David Michael, he goes up the middle. He's got a first down, and he's shy of the 16. David Michael, uh, that knee looked pretty good on that acceleration, didn't it? Yeah, sure did. Wow, he hit that hole in a hurry. I mean, he was motoring when he got to the last one. So David Michael in the ball game. He'll come out, as will Billy Wingfield. 
Brock Forsey back in at running back. That was a first round run by Michael. The pitch to Forsey. He bowls his way down inside the 15. Those are tough yards. I mean, those are just tough nosed yards. Well, it's not pretty, but this is what the Broncos like to do. They like to play physical at you, keep coming at you. And, you know, just when you think that play is only going to gain three or four yards, it busts for 20, you know. And that's, that's what the Broncos have done all year long, and they lead here 24 nothing. And look at the sea of orange behind the Bronco bench. Unreal. David Michael in there in a second down play. Michael in the backfield. Something about Brock Forsey, he just makes that play happen, I think. Well, there was good penetration by that defensive front, too. Remember we were talking about timing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when those defensive linemen are in your backfield, that's not a, a very good thing to have happen. And J.J. Millen was certainly in the backfield. Again, another freshman. We well, talked about how young this team is. They're, they're young and they're big. 6'5", 225-pounder there. Brock is now with a third down play here, coming in from the sidelines. Clock running, a minute 36 to go here in the first half. Boise State up 24 nothing. looking to tack something more on here. David Michael way back there. They flip it out to Michael. Michael slips one tackle and gets to the 10-yard line, but he's going to be shy of a first down. So now the Broncos with a fourth down will bring Nick Kalayak out, I do believe. This is a fourth down. B.J. Rohde out there. Here comes Nick Kalayak. There you see under a minute to go here, the Taco Bell clock. And let's see where Rohde's going to put it down. Right there at the 18-yard line. So 28-yard field goal attempt from the right hash mark by Nick Kalayak. Broncos up 24-0. Just a slight breeze. And Kalaikai's kick is up, and it is good. So Nick Kalaikai, 2-2 two two on field goals here today. That one from 28 yards, and the Boise State Broncos extend their lead to 27 points. Kalaikai's pretty deadly from that distance. I mean, that's a good distance for him. Anywhere from 25 to about 40 yards. You get outside 40 gets a little bit more hairy for him. Remember, stay tuned at halftime for the Treasure Valley Dodge Dealers Halftime Report. We're, we're going to have all the scores and highlights of today's college action. It is the Dodge Halftime Report coming up in just a few minutes right here on the Bronco Television Network. There you see what kind of a day it is. A beautiful day in Reno, Nevada. Not a cloud in the sky for the most part. A lot of few puffy clouds and whatnot, but it is gorgeous here. It's got to be awesome for all those folks in orange across the stadium sitting out there in that beautiful sunshine. Yep, it's nice and warm. There you see the Bronco scoring drive thanks to Tony Altieri. The Altieri drive, six plays, 18 yards, 3.07 off the clock. Tony will take credit for those three points, too. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> and well, he should. Tony Altieri with the block of the punt. All right, here comes the Broncos to kick it off. Tyler Jones now kicking off to Ronnie Hardeman, and Buddy Lewis has shown a pension for taking it out of the end zone. It's a tough kick. Comes to Hardeman right at the goal line, and Hardeman scoots up the middle and all the way out to the 26-yard line. So a good job by the special teams in Nevada returning kickoffs here today against Boise State. Yeah, they've certainly got their offense in decent field They haven't been able to do much with the field position, but they've, they've got we're down 27 nothing. Let's see if Chris Stormy throws to the end zone three times or if he just basically takes a knee and says, let's get into the halftime here and figure out what went wrong during this first half. I think with Nate Burleson and his running ability after the catch, they might try a couple here. Yep. They hand it off. Mitchell doesn't get anything. Travis Berger trips him up. Berger is kind of on the ground along with Tony Altieri. And Berger trips him up. Yeah, he just reached out there. With his right arm, got some leg. Running back goes down. So that's going to be it. They'll let it tip off now. The Boise State Broncos with a huge first half. 17 first quarter points. And 10 more here in the second quarter. And the Boise State Broncos favored by, well, depending what you looked at, anywhere from 16 to 19 points. Lead it by 27 at halftime here at Mackey Stadium. And the Boise State Broncos... Getting the job done for 
30 minutes anyway. Let's go down to Jeff Caves, who's with the Dan Hawkins. Jeff? Hawk, I know amongst other things, last night you told the kids that they're going to have most success when they shoot for enjoyment, baby. Yeah. Are they playing pretty relaxed? Yeah, I think they are. I think they came out with their horns out. Really proud of them. Defense obviously playing great. Uh, you know, we uh, weren't able to get a couple of touchdowns, but Snick's kicking the ball well there. What about what Nevada's doing with all their substitutions and motions? It seems to be backfiring on them. Do you think they'll continue that in the second half? Yeah, that's part of their plan. i got to give them some credit. You know, I think it's, I think it's a good scheme. So uh, we just got to get lined up a little better in the second half. All right, Hawk, good luck. Well, there's more Hockerties for you, Wayne. Maybe we'll <laughs> yeah. get some more post game. He thinks it's a good scheme. I think it's kind of a shady scheme because it's right on the edge of breaking the rule. But at any rate, they're doing it, and the Broncos are not letting it get to them. Boise State leads it by a score of 27-0 here at Mackey Stadium in Reno. It's halftime. The Dodge Halftime Report will continue after this on the Bronco Television Network. 27-0, Boise State, the 21st-ranked team in the ESPN Coaches Poll, 23rd according to Associated Press. Broncos leading it here. There's Zach Threadgill. His numbers, 3 out of 11 with one interception. Unbelievable. And no catches today for one Nate Burleson. Wow, that, that probably shocks me more than the, even the score is that he has not caught one ball yet today. And to be real honest, Threadgill hasn't really given him too many opportunities to catch the ball. Boise State will kick off to start the second half. Here you see a little bit of a breeze picking up here in the afternoon here in the state of Nevada. About three to 5,000 Bronco fans. Nobody could really get a good count because nobody would stay still long enough. <laughs> They're all over this town. But they were packing it in the stands. There you see some of the orange here. And I mean, I'll tell you what, this orange thing, ever since Fresno State, has been great. You know, orange... Never been my favorite color either, you know, but I mean, the, the bottom line is, is that it's bright orange. It sticks out. It worked in Tennessee. Tennessee Vols have got quite a tradition there. So here we go. Second half kickoff. 30 minutes of football to go, and this one's out into the stadium. He's got that little five-mile-an-hour win behind him. Tyler Jones does. He doesn't need much help, but just enough to, for no return there. But 30 minutes of football left for this team here. And then, of course, there will be a bowl game. A lot of speculation. I say it's like 85% the Humanitarian Bowl. Little chance of the Seattle Bowl. But I don't see a whole lot of difference between those two bowls, to be honest with you. There's been some talk lately that if the Big Ten can't fill all of its slots, there's been some talk about a possible Sun Bowl matchup with Boise State, Arizona State. Wouldn't that be neat? But, boy, you're talking minuscule chances there. Handoff to Milton. He's in starting this half at running back. And he gets a couple of yards up the middle as Zach Threadgill starting things off with a run just to get things going here in the third. Well, the passing game has been so rough for Nevada that really they've had to rush the ball. And we've seen in the first half that Mitchell was the carrier eight out of the ten times they rushed. And that's only Millen's second carry. Or Milton, excuse me. Second down, about seven yards to go as Threadgill changing the play up there. He's got three wide receivers to the left side. Looking this way, throws, and Chris Carr was the only guy that could have been completed to it. Now there's a, pat, a pat flag that went down. And Broncos are pretty upset about that because it's going to be pass interference against Boise State. I'm not sure where it was, but we'll check it out. Pass interference. State. Well, let's see if we can see the pass interference. All three of the wideouts to the left side of the formation were in man-to-man -man coverage. Where is the pass interference? I didn't see anything there. So pass interference call against Boise State. I know the Western Athletic Conference is getting a little bit concerned about some things. You know, they came after the Boise State video board. A couple of weeks ago, who they showed a, a pass interference call that was not a pass interference call about eight times on the replay, and they said, enough of that. So they put the skids to that thing in a hurry. But that's a first down. The pass incomplete thrown behind the intended receiver, Nate Bertelson, and now the fans getting on Threadgill a little bit. Well, this passing game for Nevada today doesn't resemble anything I've seen on film that I've watched. Uh, they, they're trying some different things here today, and it's really not working. So it'll be second down and 10. Ball out of the 38-yard line, just underway here. Again, the big story is that uh, Zach Threadgill, 
not having a great day, nor is Nate Burleson, who came into this game with 131 catches, and here into the third period, he still has 131 catches. Hasn't caught a ball today. You know sooner or later he's going to catch one there. And you would think right now would be a good time. It's second down and 10. Pass incomplete. They went the other way again, away from him, to Maurice Mann, the junior out of Monterey, California, incomplete. Wayne, I just uh, received some information that I guess our referee's mic went out, so we're not going to hear any more of the calls today, so we're going to have to brush up on the signals. So I hope okay. you know what the signals are, and maybe we'll put our heads together and try to come up with the correct answer. We'll get it, even if we don't. We can't do any worse. I know. What are you trying to get? I'm just, hey, I'm just <laughs> hey. trying to get us arrested by black police. <laughs> I just, I love it, man. They flip it out here, incomplete. Intended for Bertelson, and Quentin Michael was right there. And, of course, you can hear the crowd very upset at the situation. And you you said it. This is a – right now the offense doesn't seem anything like what you've seen on film. This is a team – I mean, Threadgill has seven 300-yard passing uh, games to his credit this year. He has back-to-back 400-yard games at BYU and Rice. I mean, they haven't had a whole lot of trouble scoring points. Except the last two weeks. Well, they scored 30 last week. They scored uh, 23 the week before against UTEP. That's not a lot, but That's, it's, you're it's right. not as anemic as what we're seeing today. Oh, look at wow, this. Wow, that is ripped. This is sending Gilligan all the way back to the, about the seven-yard line. Gilligan trying to find some running room and does back up to the 21-yard line. Tim Gilligan averaging 15 yards a return. Gets one right there. About 20 yards for Tim Gilligan. He can sure save you some yardage, can he? Yeah, that was a nice return. It actually outkicked his coverage. Now there's a flag at the 48. Hadn't seen the flag until now because it's at the midfield. But boy, that punt traveled a long way. That was picture perfect, man. That was a, a majestic punt. Uh, if you're Boise State and this is against Nevada, the thing it is, you probably just, it's holding against Boise State. <laughs> 55 yard punt that time. So that'll negate the return pretty yeah. much. Well, we'll see where it is because the flag was thrown at midfield. They still haven't done anything. They'll we'll probably back it up another time. Why would they mark it from here? Well, they mark it from the end of the play. Holding okay. on the return. Okay, they said holding on the re I guess. But, you know, the thing of it is where the holding was was so far away, I thought it actually happened before the change of possession. Gilligan caught it at the 7. The flag was thrown at the 48-yard line at Nevada. So, anyway, Boise State now. First and 10 from about the 10-yard line. Brock Forsey, big hole up the middle. Forsey out, has the first down to the 25-yard line. Forget about the penalty, eh? Cuts back against the grain as he does so well. You know, I, I think I sound like a broken record sometimes when you announce for this guy because he does the same thing so well every week. See him cut back into that hole. It's a big hole, but he seems to have the ability to get there when it's open. 23 carries now, 143 yards. He's been doing it all year. Boise State has taken time out, apparently. A personnel problem, whatever, but Brock Forsey... And Ryan Dinwiddie and company take timeout. So we've got an unscheduled timeout here at Mackey Stadium. We'll be back after this on the Bronco Television Network. All right, stay tuned towards the end of our broadcast for the Idaho Lottery Lucky Play of the Game. We'll be featuring one of the Broncos' top plays of the day, brought to you by the Idaho Lottery, encouraging players everywhere to score big. And right now, you're looking at number five, Jeff Rowe, a freshman. He is from McQueen High School right here in Reno. He's been warming up for the pack. Meanwhile, Dinwiddie looking for Billy Wingfield. He's got Wingfield's it. got it. What a catch. He just caught that right over the back of Dominic Cruz. Dominic Cruz is right in his jersey. Well, there's no way that ball should be completed. Obviously, Wingfield's looking back for the ball. Cruz didn't have that luxury to have time to get turned back on the ball, but he is stride for stride with Wingfield. Billy just looks back and makes the catch right over the top of it. Gain of 30, down to the 41-yard line. Billy Wingfield, what a year he has had, huh? Dinwiddie. 
has the time. Throwing deep again. Everybody goes down. Tim Gilligan's going to catch a flag this time. Penalty will be against Ali Jones. We assume. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's true. That's true. You could have the offensive pass interference in there as well. So we will wait. It's going to be a pass interference one way or the other. Of that, I am safely assured. And it's a defensive pass interference. Dinwiddie had to just get rid of that ball because he got smashed back there about seven yards deep in the backfield. You know, La Tech last week really smashed Dinwiddie a couple times early in the first quarter, and he just kept going and going and going. And Well, he had his hands all beat up, too. I mean, he had one hand that was swollen up, just looked very grotesque. Yeah, it was, fortunately, it was his left hand. Broncos with a few more penalty yards than Nevada. But the Broncos with a few more points right now. 27 0. 13 08 to go here in the third quarter. Ball right at the 26 yard line for Boise State. First down and 10. Brock Forsey up the middle. Forsey's busting through a hole. He's down inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. Brock Forsey, and now he gets up holding that arm a little bit. You can see that that neck's bothering him. This guy needs a few weeks off, doesn't he? David Michael coming in for him. Here's Brock coming off the right side of the formation. Lead the fullback up into the hole. And I think he heard it when he hit the ground. No question. That, is that shows a, you how tender it is. <laughs> an injury that he had at Fresno against Fresno State. And he is just, you know, I tell you what, had been fighting it all the way through. D. Michael. Just keeps his feet. Keeps driving. He's, He's still down going. near the seven-yard line. And David Michael has a first down. He got behind some big guys and just rode the ride. <laughs> he, he got those legs driving like pistons in an engine. Well, he was right there with Darren in college. Look at college, how big he is. And D. Mike's no dummy. He goes, you know, Darren, I'm going to get behind you, and I'm going to take it all I can. And watch Rob Vine at the end of this play come over the top of the pile. And, you know, you never want to be standing around a pile because you know when some big guy like number 78 right there is going to knock you down. Wow. So the Broncos have a first and goal to go at the seven-yard line. Pitch out to D. Mike. And Mike has stood up at the six, gain of one. Good defensive thrust there by Nevada to string it out. First player to get there was Logan Carter, just another freshman. You talk about all these young kids they've got there. Don't see the option very much from the Broncos. No, and they... Cordova does a good job of forcing Dinwiddie to pitch the ball out, and then good reaction to the football, and D. Mike had nowhere to go. Hey, you're right. Cordova was in the backfield. Rushing 206 yards. Boise State, by the way, last year against Nevada, rushed for over 300 yards, so rushing was really what got it done a year ago. Second down and goal from the six. The fade going out to... They got it. Swilly, touchdown. Swilly, what a great job by Jay Swilly. He was wide open pretty much from the time he left the line of scrimmage, and all it was was a matter of whether or not it was going to get there, and it did, and Boise State has struck first here in the third quarter. Watch Dinwiddie. As soon as he throws the ball, I think he starts running to the sidelines. He knows this is over. And as you can see, Swilly had everybody beat. Chris Handy was on the coverage. And yep. Well, what coverage there was. <laughs> So Kalakai comes on. Broncos lead it 33-0 here. Kalakai's kick is up and good. So the Broncos, thanks to Jay Swilley and Ryan Dinwiddie, Keith Shuttler, the loneliest man out there who doesn't have to punt very often, come over to congratulate him. 11-18 to go here in the third quarter. 34-0. Boise State leads Nevada on the Bronco Television Network. Here's an interesting angle for that uh, little pass out there from Dinwiddie to Swilly. Just a fade route to the corner of the end zone. Doesn't get much easier than that. Well, they sure make it look easy, don't they? Connor Jones with the kickoff. This is another boomer. Doesn't go into the stands, but it's at the base there. and No return even possible with that. So Tyler Jones really getting the job done here in the third quarter. Boise State up 34 to nothing. Boise State that time going 89 yards in six plays. Took them 233 to get the job done. Broncos sorely in need, really, of an offensive drive. Brock Forsey, 24 carries, 141 yards. And so now Nevada.
going to go to the future, it looks like. Jeff Rowe, a freshman quarterback out of McQueen High School here in Reno. Same high school that Chris Carr, the Boise State cornerback, or safety actually went to. Pass is complete for about a gain of four yards. Let's go down to Jeff Cave. Jeff, what do you have for us? Well, you were talking about the last series, Wayne, the fact that Burles has not caught any balls. Boise State's defensive back coaches were very content to let him catch the screens and let him get the quick outs. He's not a long ball threat. Now they're down 34 zip, and that's not the passing game they probably need. They do need some deep balls, so it'll be interesting to see if he does get a catch. Wayne? All right, thank you, Jeff. Again, Jeff Rowe in a quarterback now. Just a freshman. Like we said, there's the future coming up right here for Chris Tormey and company. Down 34 points. Rolling. Throws it underneath. That's completed. So a couple of short passes. Just, you know, try to get him into the program right there. And that's, that's the big guy. We talk about him. Eric Streelman. He's six foot five inch. He's a load. What a nice tackle, too, by Gabe Franklin in the open field. Gabe looking at him going, I'm going to go for your ankles, dude, because I'm not. I'm not going to go for you up high. Gabe's smart, too, because he's not going to hit a 250-pound guy, guy uh, up in the chest. He's going to go for the legs. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Just knock those ankles out from underneath you. Third down and about five. Long four, maybe. Jeff Rowe, quarterback, the new kid. Freshman, straight drop back, looking, throws, complete to Burleson. There's his first catch, and it's good for a first down. Nevada crowd finally with something to cheer about. Nate Burleson with his first catch of the game, and it came officially at 9.44 here in the third quarter. Who would have thunk it, huh? Well, that was farthest from my mind. When we sat down and put our pregame show together. We thought, hey, Burleson's going to light it up today. He's going to touch the ball a lot. That's number one. Jeff Rowe, big kid. Six foot five anyway. Let's it fly out to Burleson. Burleson breaks the tackle. Got away that time from Gabe Franklin. And he's out to near midfield. Well, that's what you've got to do if you're this Nevada offense. You've got to get the ball in his hands. You've got to throw it to him. Threadgill just was having a nightmare of the day. So no catches all game, and now two catches in a row for Nate Burleson. That was right on the money. You bet. The missed tackle and that's how he gets a lot of those 1,558 yards that came into this game early. Well, he needed only 12 receptions today. And I say only 12 because he's averaging 12 a game to break the single season record for receptions in a, a year. And uh, he's got two in a row now. And you know they're going to go to him quite a bit here. Crow is rushed. Looking for something to do. And Berger will bring him down. He fumbles the football. But I, I think Nevada recovered it. Travis Berger, Travis Berger with a sack. Looked like Mitchell might have fallen on that ball. Not sure it was actually a fumble anyway. I know the ball got loose. The pocket breaks down. They have to flush him out. Still good coverage down the field, so he had to run with it. And that's something that's you know hard for a freshman to do, is to see the whole field and try to run and save his life at the same time. I'm sure the coach would just say, go out there, son. You're down 34 nothing. There's no pressure on you. Just go out there. You know that you got Nate Burleson out there. Let him help you out. He'll be open. Go to him. So I'm sure he's just trying to get some experience here. Crow, the handoff up the middle. Mitchell. Quentin Michael drags him down right about the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and ten. Quentin Michael on the stop. John Ziacco also with a piece of that to help finish it up. Quentin got a hold of him and held him, held him up, and Akko finished the job. Third and Quentin nine. Michael's last regular season game for the Broncos. What a career he's had. How many career starts has this guy 49. This 49, is 49, which is a starts. record at Boise State. This is 49th career start, and that's a record, and it's a record because he started as a freshman, and, of course, the Broncos have played in bowl games and what have you. Pro looking, tip, and complete. Well, what do you do? Flowers caught it in the air at the 35-yard line. The Broncos tipped it, and Travis Berger didn't like the call. But we'll check it out, see if it was a good one. Berger gets in the passing lane. Look at, hard to tell from that one. It was in the dark there, half this field now covered in shade. 
But nonetheless, Flowers has it, so it's a first down at the 35-yard line, and this young freshman that's come in here has a little bit of a drive going. Jeff Rowe. Rowe looking for Flowers. Flowers out of bounds. And again, Dave Franklin right in the hip pocket of the receiver running down the field. Well, and he had him right on the sidelines. He knew he had the sideline as his help. Yep, that's what they teach the cornerback. Use that sideline as your 12th defender out there. It's a great effort. You bet. They were out of bounds. You can see right here. By the time the ball gets there, everybody's out of bounds. Second down and 10 at the 35-yard line. There you see it. Rose in there. It already got 44 yards passing. More than Threadgill did the whole game. Pitch out to Mitchell. He's stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Good job by the Broncos. Bobby Hammer over there. John Siaco getting over there as well. It'll be third down and 10. Loa Emsley in at one of the tackle positions. Now Yanez back out at the left defensive end. So again, some somewhat more inexperienced people up front for the Broncos. Jeff Rose completed five out of six passes for 44 yards. Deep, incomplete, right into the sun. That would have been a tough catch for Burleson. We were down there earlier saying that sun's going to be tough if you're looking back into it, and that's exactly what Burleson was doing. Again, Burleson gets in one-on-one -on -one coverage with Julius Brown. And Julius has got pretty good coverage on him, but that's an excellent throw and just barely a miss. Yeah, and I tell you what, that was a, you're right. That was an excellent throw by Rowe. This kid. Really coming out here and just kind of airing it out. His passes have been accurate. Hopes this is the future for the University of Nevada right here. And it's scary what I'm seeing right now. Fourth down play. Fourth down and nine from the shotgun. They blitz. The blitz. Forget it. Rowe couldn't find anybody, and the Broncos brought it, said, here, welcome to the Western Athletic Conference. This is why we're 7-0, and we're bringing it to you. Brad Allen coming on the corner cat or the safety blitz. I'm not sure what position he was in, but whatever position he was in, there were a lot of guys blitzing. But Brad Allen's the one that's going to get credit for the sack. The pocket just collapses totally, and Brad, Ch we'll see Chase had a piece of that too. I didn't even see Chase check in. Brad Chase was in there also. So the Broncos now have the ball at the 45-yard line. David Michael in at running back. Dinwiddie throwing deep over the middle. Fanuki makes the catch. Lou Fanuki at the 15-yard line. Now marking at the 17. Well, we haven't called Lou's number yet. But we just did there, and Dinwiddie took another hit at the end of that play on his right hand. But Fanuki comes back to catch the fluttering pass, and it's fluttering because Dinwiddie absolutely got munched. What a great catch by Lou Fanuki. What a great senior year he's had. Had a great junior year to precede it, but he's had a, some sensational catches this year. Brock Forsey back in, tailback. Remember, he went out at that shoulder problem. Just a recurring thing. Go straight up the middle, not a lot of yardage there. But it's kind of funny because Dan Hawkins said, you know, the more banged up he gets, the ornery he gets. And I still think he's going to look forward to a couple weeks off. Oh, yeah, and that's the thing. These kids know that. Now, they, they get through the final, you know, whatever they got left here, 20 minutes of football, and you're basically going to be free for a little bit. If the Broncos do go to the Humanitarian Bowl, they would play that game on December 31st. So they're going to take a couple of weeks off. You can do a lot of healing when you're in the kind of shape these players are in in a couple of weeks. Dinwiddie looking for Swilly, and Swilly is knocked off the ball. Okay, Swilly turns around wondering how come there's no flag, but there isn't. So it'll be a third down. That route defended a little bit better by Dominic Cruz. Now, why is there not pass interference? 
Dominic Cruz just kind of put a shoulder right into him. Oh, well. Third down. Maybe because it's 34 to nothing. Possibly. 50% on third down conversions for the Broncos today. I can do that math. Four of eight. That's an easy one. Here comes the blitz. Didn't win. He throws it over the middle. Incomplete. Boy, I tell you, they brought everybody that time. And Jennifer Strophus, he got hit just as he caught it. Strophus was the hot receiver. So here comes Nick Kalayakai on. Broncos will try a field goal here, apparently so. See the blitz coming. There's about eight guys coming for Nevada, and Strophus was the hot receiver. Ball a little bit behind him. Going to mark it at the 22-yard line, so it'll be a 32-yard field goal attempt for Nick Kalayakai. High snap, brought down by B.J. Rohde. Good hold, and it's a good kick. So the Broncos continue. They're three for three in field goals here today. Nick Kalayakai having himself a day. Nick now 11 of 13 on the year. And the Boise State Broncos have extended their lead with 5.15 to go in the third quarter to 37-0 here against Nevada. Don't forget, coming up towards the end of the game, stay tuned for the Subway Sum of the Game. We'll be highlighting a non-starting player who has made a big contribution to our game today. Brought to you by Subway. Subway. Eat fresh. Connor Jones with a kickoff. This one continues to drift, and it too goes out of the end zone. So whatever wind there is out there with Tyler Jones' leg, Nevada just hasn't had a chance to return anything here in the third quarter. Now Jeff Rowe, not a bad debut. Five out of seven for 44 yards in his first series before the Broncos sacked him on a fourth down play. But he was impressive, and uh, during that, those seven passes, Nate Burbelson caught his first two. Just a freshman out of a local high school here, McQueen High School, who I think won a playoff game last night, didn't they? Huh? Yeah, they won a playoff game against Reno. Looked pretty good, won it pretty easily. Sinclair ticker, the Sinclair Oil ticker. Sign of that big green dinosaur. Bumble. We've got it back. Reno, Reno has it. Reno, there's, the, there's some old school. Nevada, <laughs> not Reno. Jeff Caves, what do you have for us? You know, Nevada's certainly a different state, and Reno's a different city. They allow beer sales here during the football games. We asked some of the concessionaires here from Sodexo, about 60% of their total gross is in beer sales. You see the Takati there, they have to pour that into glasses, the guy said. Goes through about 20 cases, it slows them down. They're generating about 100,000 a game just in brewskis. Wayne? Hmm. How about those beef tacos? You gotta check out. <laughs> I could use one of those Yeah, right that looked pretty good to me. Row is down. The Broncos coming up with the blitz and putting a little bit more pressure on the young kid. I think they waited to see, you know, what he could do. And then they said, hey, this guy's pretty good. Let's not give him time to throw. And Tony Altieri with a sack. Yeah, Tony is having a big game today. He's blocked the punt. Played well on the defensive front. And now he gets a, records a sack in what will be his last regular season game. That guy... Very, very fortunate to still be playing football right now after that scary, scary uh, neck injury at Houston last last year. Ball at the 15 now, third down and long. Throw, throwing the screen, not there. Cam Merritt on defense, and now there's a flag. Yeah, Cam got there a little early and had a, had a piece of his arm, spun him around. But he's behind the line of scrimmage, so that's yeah. why they're waving the flag That's off. what I'm saying. I mean, I'm, I'm just sitting here letting these things go. Behind the line of scrimmage, it doesn't count, but... You can pretty much do anything you want back there. Yeah, it's free game. <laughs> people, are, people are pretty much free game there. You can give them the business, you know, you can do anything you want. <laughs> so Tim Gilligan backing up now. He's getting ready to receive the punt. The last time was a 55-yarder. I mean, Derek Jones can check. really belt it. He's on his goal line, scoops it off the turf. This one's high and not very long. So Tim Gilligan, oh, he's going to catch it. Gilligan is the guy. And Tim Gilligan, ridden out of bounds. But the Boise State Broncos, once again, will be right back into Nevada territory at the 48-yard line. This broadcast is copyrighted by Boise State University. All rights are reserved. What are they reserved for? For next year, maybe. <laughs> Till December 14th when we do a basketball game. 
I want you guys to be ready for that. That game's going to start at 11 o'clock, Boise State at Idaho. Holy cow. And I want you to be watching it because if we got to stay up, you got to stay, stay, stay up too. Exactly. B.J. Rohde in the ball game now. B.J. says he needs 14 passes to keep his pass efficiency rating going. Or he'll be below 75%. He is a funny guy. David Michael. A couple of yards at best before he's stacked up. Speaking of that uh, Idaho Boise State basketball game on the 14th of December, we're going to be doing Eric Geller, your uh, cohort in the sports department at KBCI in Boise, is going to be doing a little pregame show from the Haypenny Bridge in Boise. So that'll be kind of a fun deal. Well, we're going to try to make it like a fun midnight madness thing. I mean, if the game's got to be played at 11 o'clock and it's being played at 10 o'clock Pacific time simply because they've got winter graduation at the Kibbe Dome and that's where they want to play it, you see B.J. Rohde and his numbers on the season, not bad at all either, huh? But, uh, you know, it's going to be kind of fun. B.J. Rohde back, steps up into the pocket. A lot of pressure there, and he gets sacked. So B.J. just didn't have time. He was looking deep for Lou Fanuki, and they had to blitz on, and Fanuki was well covered, and B.J. had to eat it. Yeah, he had defenders in his face right when he started to set up. Got some new players in the game now for the Boise State offensive front. Besides Rody. You're talking about being depleted. He really was. He lost his shoe. So a loss of six will be third down, long, third and 14. There you see his passing efficiency as a team. They lead the nation in that Boise State does. Tim Gilligan in motion. Here comes the outside blitz, Cordova. B.J. running for his life, making a couple of good moves, and throws it away. Yeah, that was a smart move by Rody just to dump it off. Cut your losses, bring the punt team on, and move on. So B.J. Rody and company, they bring the pressure Nevada does, and there was nothing really there. And again, he was looking for Fanuki, who drew double coverage. And so, like you said, B.J., a smart move just to kind of throw it away. And the lonesome man on that Bronco sideline, Keith Shuffler on the sideline. Coming back in now for a second punt of the game. Broncos had snapped it right then. Nevada would have had 12 men on the field, but they got the guy off. Shuttler goes down, no call. Taken at the eight yard line and the Broncos stop him at the 11. So a nice play by Boise State on that coverage there. Brad Allen Nate and Burtles, Donnie Heck. Yeah, Nate Burleson really couldn't get anything going. Hey, we've talked about it, but the next live Bronco television event is going to be Saturday, December 14th. The Bronco men's basketball team up at Moscow to take on the Idaho Vandals. The live BTB ball game starts at 11 p.m. That's right, 11 o'clock right here on the Bronco television network. Midnight Madness with the Broncos and the Vandals, and we certainly hope that you will join us. Of course, the Boise State basketball starting a new era. They uh, play actually next Tuesday night against Idaho State at the BSU Pavilion, a 7.30 game. And uh, looked pretty good in a couple of exhibition wins. Had a problem with Eastern Illinois in the NIT first round. But, uh, you know, I think Greg Graham's got things going there. Cordova, look out. That's Altieri again. I'm not Cordova. I'm sorry, Rowe. I just was thinking about Cordova on a defensive situation. But Rowe, look out. It was Tony Altieri. Well, Cordova's 5'5", five five, and this is number I 5. Know. I was going to mention Cordova about something, and then I saw this Altieri guy coming. And Altieri's so. having uh, quite a... Quite a little second half here. Sure is, and, and Rose starting to feel the pressure. Broncos well, have really picked it up. I'm surprised he held on to the football. Good job. So it'll be second down and long. Second and 17. Rose just hands this one off, and Mitchell is corralled at about the two yard line, and Broncos, like you say, with a lot of different people in there that time, and getting to him was Chauncey Ako, but Broncos is doing a good job defensively, trying to keep that goose egg up there. Well, they haven't been able to hold on to the goose egg in this last four or five game run where they've played excellent defense throughout the game. Well, that's a story that really has been undertold about Boise State. This defense, the last five games, has been just absolutely unbelievable. Third down and forever. And Rowe, I 
I think he wanted to hand it off, but his back went one way, or maybe Rowe went the wrong, wrong way, but he did the right thing by just kind of holding on to it, trying to go north and south, and calling on his punter to let him come in here. But let me talk about this Boise State defense. In the last four games, they've allowed 10 points, 7 points, 3 points, 8 points, and now no points in this ball game right here today. I mean, this, that's unbelievable in this day and age. Just a tremendous, tremendous effort. Really a team that's come together in a fashion defensively. I didn't, I'm not sure they really expected at the start of the year to be that dominant. Well, they're dominant right now. They've got 15 minutes of football on this Leave No Doubt Tour. Broncos will go into the last 15 minutes of 37-0 here in Reno, and we'll be back on the Bronco Television Network. Well, I'll tell you what, the noise you're hearing is not from Nevada fans, from the Broncos as... Derek Jones standing on his own end line, and he will get this thing off. And it's a good kick. It's going to come to Tim Gilligan at about the 46-yard line. And Gilligan, he's at the 40 and out of bounds at the 35-yard line. So Tim Gilligan with a nice return. Forced out by Chris Smith. Chris Smith was the guy that forced him out of bounds. Let's take a look here at your Dodge stats. The third quarter stats, Boise State total offense, 370 yards to 87 15 yards rushing for the Wolfpack. And, then, you know, you take away when you get sacks. So those are really, you know, they're really passing yards in my opinion. But it still counts towards the statistical mismatch that we're seeing right here. Yeah, last year, Boise State had, I believe, like 330 yards rushing and only 85 for Nevada. So it's very similar to a year ago where the Broncos dominating on the ground. And Ryan Dinwiddie done for the day and done probably, uh, well, done until maybe the 31st of December. Maybe the 30th. Will it be the Seattle Bowl? Will it be the Humanitarian Bowl? Will it be another bowl creeping in there because a conference can't meet all of its requirements? Who knows? But right now, the Broncos rank 21st in the nation. Could very well crack the top 20. And as you can see, the Nevada Wolfpack here, they've got a young team. They've got a lot of talent. Chris Tormey trying to turn things around, and I think he will. Jerry Smith on the end around. They hand it off. This is Carp. This is uh, Brock Forsey. I'm sorry. Brock Forsey in the ball game. He's gone. Brock Forsey. I didn't expect to see him with that team. So for a minute, I thought it was somebody else. But it's Brock Forsey getting his fourth touchdown of the game. Well, enjoy it because that'll probably be the last play you see of Brock Forsey today. 38-yard rushing touchdown. 38-yard rush for Brock Forsey. He's closing in on 200 rushing yards here today. I don't think he's going to get it because I agree with you. I think he's done. Counter play back to the left side of the formation. And the senior from Centennial High School in Meridian gets his 29th touchdown of the year. Four today. Last week he only had one, but he's had four in each of what? Oh, what three of the last four games? Something like that. Kalakai's kick is good. And the Boise State Broncos score quickly here in the fourth quarter and take a 44 to nothing lead. The Boise State Broncos up by 44 here in Reno. Well, there you go. The sign was made before this game. I guess they knew something. Whack champs 8-0 to Broncos. 44-0 lead here with 14 and 42 to go in the regular season. And the Boise State Broncos will kick off to the Nevada Wolfpack. Now this one's into the win here. Let's see how good Tyler Jones' leg really is, okay? He's kicked everything in the third quarter out of the end zone. It's pretty good. He's got him into the win right at the goal line. That's not bad at all. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. Stick him. We got a flag down. And what a great hit that time. I'm not sure which Bronco got him, but I'll tell you, Ronnie Hardeman's feeling it. Well, Berger was in the middle of that. Who's the last guy to get up? Is that usually the guy that does it? That's Cam, Cam Merritt. Merritt's in the middle of that. <laughs> Wes Nurse is out there. I mean, you know, there's a lot of starting guys running down on that kickoff team. That's the first time the Broncos have really stuck a kickoff return all day. That's the one bright spot for Nevada has been their kickoff return when they've had the opportunity. Let's see what the flag was. There was a flag, remember. I'm not sure what it was. Looks like it's going to be against Boise State, whatever it was. So it's going to be against the Broncos, and it's going to bring it all the way out to the 30-yard line. And 
Their mic broke, so their signals broke. Blocking from behind, I guess. Well, they were covering. How would, why would they be blocking anybody? I'm not sure what the deal was there. <laughs> there you saw Dan Hawkins shaking his head, the same thing. Rowe, firing, complete. Flowers has it, but Chris Carr has Flowers right there. So Chris Carr from the Queen High School here in Reno. Nevada recruited him very heavy, and he went to Boise State. Let's go down to Jeff Caves. Jeff, what do you have for us? You know, Chris Tormey has not given up on this football game or even at the beginning of this half. He had to tell his team to run out here fast. He caught some guys walking. He wasn't thrilled with them. He got in their face. And just now he came off and talked to the defense. And what he told them is, you guys can't do it as individuals. The linebackers, you're not following this game. And that's why we're not getting it done. You go back to doing what we tell you to do. And we'll have a better chance of uh, at least keeping it a little close. Wayne? All right. Milton, the, Milton the carrier that time gets it out near to the first down. I think he's got a first down. So nice little run there. One of the first times that Matt Milton has had an opportunity to do anything. And we've got another Nevada player down. Trainers are out there talking to him at the 30-yard line. The last shutout for Boise State was against Weber State back in 1980, September 27th. So for Nevada, I'm sorry, for Nevada was back there in September 27th, 1980 at Weber State. So it's been a long time since the pack has seen a goose egg up on the scoreboard. Right now, the solution scoreboard, final Notre Dame, 42 Rutgers. You see the injured player down. All right, it is uh, Tim Sylvester, offensive guard, who's down. Michigan State, zero. Halftime score, North Carolina State, 10. Other Florida scores State in the third seven. quarter, BYU and Utah in a dogfight at 6-3 BYU. Look at that, Montana down to Montana State. That's wow, always a tough that's one in, there. in Missoula. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Boston College all over Temple in the fourth quarter. Again, our Sinclair scoreboard. As you can see, what a beautiful day it's been here at Mackey Stadium. Ohio State beating Michigan. So Ohio State undefeated, probably going to be number one in the BCS. USC all over UCLA. Notre Dame wins it. And with a player down, we're going to take a break here as well. Beautiful day in Reno. It's been all Broncos. They lead it 44 to nothing with 13.47 to go, and we're going to hold it here. So Sylvester, by the way, is up and walking off now in his own power, and that's good to see. So what do you think? Larry, the uh, Broncos headed to the Humanitarian Bowl. Is that where they're destined to be? Well, I mean, you have to look at uh, With all the hyperbole in the newspaper and in the press over the last few weeks, the, the conference has a contract for the number one WAC team to play in the Humanitarian Bowl. Well, who is that? Yeah, there's That's no Boise mistake State. there. Those are, these are all the givens. I, I, I see no other scenario, really, unless something just pops out of the blue. It's going to keep Boise State anywhere other than Boise in the humanitarian. Yeah, I don't see him going to the Seattle Bowl for sure. Milton, rip down. Barrios with the tackle. Yeah, and I think the only other thing that could happen, the only other scenario that would happen would be, you know, the Big Ten and the Big 12 and all these guys have so many bowl commitments. They're right down to their eighth and ninth teams that if they don't have enough bowl eligible, somebody might pop up there. And that's where the Sun Bowl popped up as a minuscule opportunity that the Big Ten might not have enough bowl eligible teams. And without knowing what happened today around the country, I wouldn't know if that's still the case. But it was the case last week, and the Broncos' name was mentioned. But other than that, I agree with you. I think it's 95% H bowl. Milton again is the Nevada Wolfpack running the football. Well, the trouble is trying to figure out this bowl thing, too, is we're going to have to wait till the end of next week because there's a lot of games on Thanksgiving weekend that are yet to be played, and a lot of things can happen. A lot of teams could get bowl eligible. Yeah, I do hear that, uh, if anything, I hear that the Broncos could wrap this bowl thing up as to where they're going to be this weekend by tomorrow night. So wait and see what happens. Like I say, though, don't hold your breath too much. I think you're going to be watching the Broncos on December 31st in Broncos Stadium. He will be. Who will it be? Could it be in Nebraska? Could it be in Oklahoma State? Texas A&M still. Crow back to pass. Let's it go just as he's hit. It was underthrown, intended for Flowers, and Barrios and Chris Carr were both there on the covers. Guerrero and Yanez are in the backfield knocking the freshman down. All right, last shutout in Reno as we start looking to the record books was back in 1966. That is amazing. San Francisco State. I didn't know there was a San Francisco. Neither did I. I'm sitting there going 66. 
That's far enough back to get me back into high school. Here comes the punt. Oh, look at this. Another good one. This guy's got a foot, doesn't he? He's going to bounce it about the five and into the end zone for a touchback. Michaels have it at the 20. Man, Eric Jones, what a foot. So there's timeout here at Mackey Stadium in Reno. We've got 12.04 to play in the regular season of the Boise State Broncos working on a shutout here in Reno. All right, University of Nevada, you're looking at the press box slash luxury suite slash uh, just really nice addition they've got here at Mackey Stadium. You know, it's amazing how many Broncos are up in that thing. I know two or three different parties that somehow got their boxes reserved. Billy Wingfield in motion. Hand off up the middle. You got to be kidding me. It's Brock Forsen. I guess they're trying to get him 200 yards. He's got 180 before this drive started. Maybe he just got something because they're all <laughs> congratulating him. Yep. I'm not sure what it is. There must have been something that I'm not aware Maybe of. Maybe they just wanted to check out of the game. Could be. Brock Forsey. Get a little recognition with this big crowd of Boise State fans here in Reno. 187 yards rushing, four touchdowns today. Oh, man. Am if, I... if not the greatest, one of two of the greatest running backs in the history of the school. Some guys are just fun to watch, and Brock Forsey, you are just fun to watch. David Michael. A couple of yards. It'll be third down for Boise State. Yeah, Brock Forsey is just fun to watch. He's a nice kid. He's a quiet kid. Anytime you want an interview with him, he'll give it to you. He's no problem to anybody. Just gets the job done, goes around his own business. And this year, he's just unbelievable. 29 touchdowns on the season. Leads the nation. And shame on you, Doc Walker guys, for not doing that. All right, third down and about a foot, maybe an inch. Not a whole lot. B.J. Rohde, nice little play and there, Three-yard game. <laughs> he's about three yards tall. All right, Brock Forsey, look at this. Brock Forsey, 27 carries, 187 yards, four touchdowns. We're making him player of the game right now. You bet. Player of the game. With 10.41 left, he is the player of the game, and he's been the player of the year. Yeah, he's a happy camper, and I'll tell you what, he's looking forward to one more game with Boise State. He doesn't care where it is. He's going to be in the postseason. Broncos 11-1. What a way to go out. Kind of had his breakout game at the Humanitarian Bowl. A few years ago. B.J. Rohde with a one-hopper to Wingfield. Wingfield plays it like a shortstop, but wrong game. Didn't get by him, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He never made the throw to first, though. B.J. Rohde, I got to say a lot about this kid. I mean, here's the kid that came in, was called upon after the Arkansas game. Actually, second half of the Arkansas game, threw two touchdown passes. And then went, went undefeated as the starting quarterback for Boise State. Started against Wyoming and had a really good game there. And just held the fort down until Ryan Dinwiddie could come back. And what a job he did. David Michael beat the blitz. Gets outside, down the sidelines, out of bounds. D-Mike saw the blitz. His eyes got wide, popped it outside, and got a great game. And, of course, D-Mike was injured. I mean, he missed a few games for Boise State. Broncos, third longest win streak in the nation. And, of course, this will be number 10. Watch D-Mike. D-Mike in there with the second-team offensive line. And D-Mike might, you know, wonder why he's still in there, too. But, hey, he is the second-team guy. <laughs> Donnie Heck in there now as well. Out to Billy Wingfield. A couple Billy's of moves. Dancing. Yeah, he was just chucking in the drive in there, wasn't he? He had it all going for him. Jess Hernandez in at the left tackle spot. Mike McLeod in at the center spot. Michael Ansell in at a guard. Billy Wingfield now, four catches for 69 yards. Tyrone Totogi in at one of the guard positions. Donnie Heck at the running back spot. He's got the football, and he just keeps his feet going. He's going to be close to a first down, if not a first down. I think he's going to get a good mark. First 
Boy, that's an amazing stat we showed you a little while ago that uh, Nevada has not been shut out here since 1966. It is a first down for Donnie Heck. Trent Lundin in now at the tight end spot. Kevin Lawsman also. Plus, PA guy giving a lot of instructions for guys leaving the stadium here. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> do this, do that, do this. He's really giving them the uh, the the old instructions here. D. Mike, not nothing there. It'll be second down and ten for the Bronx. Boise State hop the charter. Come on back home tonight. I think they get in town about six thirty. So it'll be a quick turnaround here for BSU. They got their football banquet tomorrow night. We got the coaches show at five thirty. We'll be live from just outside the Jordan Ballroom where I think about 500 tickets have been sold for that thing. I think it's pretty well full up. Billy Wingfield, the inside screen, a little bob screen, not there. Good coverage by the Nevada Wolfpack. Jeff Caves, what do you have for us? Well, you guys were talking a lot about the Wingfield, Humanitarian Bowl. Gary Beck is here, the executive director. By the way, Commissioner Carl Benson not here today. There were shirts to be loaded onto this plane for the Humanitarian Bowl for the players to wear immediately after. Uh, those shirts were left behind, so there'll be nothing decided today. They are expecting tomorrow, though, Wayne, to get that underway. There will be a ceremony in the locker room after. Gene Blameyer and Dan Hawkins agreeing they do not want to celebrate a WAC championship on the field, that it would be better and more respectful to Nevada to do it in the locker room. Wayne? I agree with that. I think, you know, you get that celebration going. I mean, you do it out on the field, and we've seen other teams do that, and that's, you know, not the way to do it. So get into the locker room and have that celebration there. The Broncos are going to be the WAC champs. There's been no drama about that, really, from the first quarter on. Well, now, I think you might see some of the players go over and thank these uh, thousands of Bronco fans that have come in their orange attire to this game today. They might go over there and give them a little high five before they head to the locker room. Broncos trying a long field goal. 55-yard field goal. This is uh, Tyler Jones from 55 yards out. And Tyler Jones, the kick is up, and it's no, no good. It would have been short and was wide left, but you got to give him a shot at it, I guess. 55 yarder. Tyler Jones, 55 yard field goal, no good. So Boise State will turn the ball over to the Nevada Wolfpack. And about the only problem here with 7.48 to go is whether or not the Pack can get the ball in the end zone. The Broncos can reserve the shutout, and they've got the second teamers in there. And this is what, you know, it's kind of fun. I mean, the first guys go, you know what? Hey, it's up to them. It's a challenge for them. They're getting into the game. The outcome has been decided, but there's some business left undone right now. And the Broncos want to make sure that that goose egg stays up there. Throw, back to pass, looking to throw, and throws it away because he has some great pressure that time coming from Brad Chase. Yeah, Brad Chase is in the game. Terrell Hall. Cam Hall's in the game. Cameron Merritt. There's Barrios. Clint Furr. Lee Marks. A whole bunch of young guys in there. Boy, this Bronco defense, what a job. Once again, the first team is just leaving the game with a goose egg up there. I mean, gave up one touchdown last week. So far, none here today. Oh, oh there's the Broncos jumping. Lola Emsley getting a little glancy. Jumps across. Make it second and five. But I think that's the story, really, in the last four or five games that the Broncos' uh, defense has really just stepped it up. I mean, early in the season, you know, they gave up 38 to Utah well, State, right, gave up 31 to Hawaii, 24 to Tulsa, and 21 to Fresno. Now, you know, okay, that happens in a wild game. But then all of a sudden, they only gave up eight to San Jose State, and that was on the second team. Only a field goal at UTEP, only a touchdown against Rice, and only a touchdown and a field goal against La Tech. And today, none of that. So it's been just a great effort by the defensive team. And even if Nevada does score here in some way or, other, or form or another, it's just still a great job. And look at Chris Carr. Chris Carr read the play, came up and made the hit on Nate Burleson, who will actually you lose yardage on that one. Well, how much fun is this for Chris Carr? This is his hometown. 
He's only a sophomore. Two more years of watching number 22 in this backfield. Chris Carr broke on this pass play. He had about a 15-yard cushion. He made it up in a hurry. There's the kid that got away, tackling the guy that wanted to be the leading receiver in all the nation. And I'll tell you what, that was a great hit by Chris Carr. They're down at nine. Throw in the pocket, has plenty of time. Now it's kind of falling apart on him. Throws over the middle, and it's caught. What a great catch by Nate Burleson. He got popped by Carr, then popped again by Hall, and still held on to it. And he's just starting to get his surroundings figured out because he got hit that hard but still held on. Well, here's one reason why he had 131 receptions coming into this game. He has a, a unique ability to hang on to the ball while he's being hit. So Nate Bertelson, 135 receptions this year. That's unbelievable, and it's a new Nevada record. The national record is 142. Mitchell bouncing off some guys. Finally, he's brought down. Terrell, Terrell Hall, finally. Yeah, Terrell Hall got him around the legs and finally knocked him off his feet. But Mitchell, with a nice little gain, that's going to be a first down for the Wolfpack. First down. Don't you know that Wolfpack off that goose egg off the block? No question. I mean, there's, you're not worried about the outcome now. You know what the outcome is. Bottom line is, you don't want to go down with nothing up on the board, and no matter who you are, that's the way you want to play. The freshman quarterback in there from McQueen High School right here in Reno. Rowe. Quick pass. Burleson, that's his fourth reception of the game. Burleson down the sideline, steps out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. So Nate Burleson who went receptionless for three quarters. And then they brought in the young man, Rowe, and all of a sudden it's opened up for him a little bit. Kid throws a nice ball, and he's got good poise back there for a young guy. That's actually Burleson's fifth reception now. And he's in motion. Fumble. Fumble. Let's see what happens. Broncos, Broncos have it. Have it. There's there's a, yeah, there's a flag down as well. Let's see what happens. There was a lot of movement before the snap, but I'm not sure what the deal will be. They're going to call offsides on Boise State. There's a lot of jumping around in there. And I think Guerrero was still offsides when the ball was snapped. That probably kind of helped contribute to the fumble. That'll be another five yards marked off. Move the ball down to the 17-yard line, about 18-yard line maybe. First team D might be giving the second team D a little razz, and they've given up the shutout a couple of different weeks here. If they do it again this week, first team guys will be all over them on that plane right <laughs> on. All right, Burleson wide left. He's been the, the go-to guy here for Rowe. He's looking for him again, and Burleson catches a touchdown. Nate Burleson, his sixth reception of the game. How quickly did he catch six passes, huh? So the 1966 shutout will stay intact. San Francisco State's still going to stay in the record books, huh? And he did it against Chris Carr, the guy that got him before. Again, that's pretty decent coverage. Yeah. I mean, the ball's right there, and Burleson knows how to catch it. So. Yep, nothing wrong with the coverage. I mean, that was just a perfectly thrown ball to a very, very good wide receiver. And it's 44-6 to here in Reno. And the extra point attempt is up, and it is good by David Fine. So there's time out here in Reno. We've got 5.31 to go here in the season. Boise State, 44-7. Great job. 
Wayne DeZubak, Larry Pulaski, Jeff Caves with you. We're back here for the final 531 of this football game. Boise State in charge and so many new players in there. You got Lou Finucchi and Chris Carr back to receive the kickoff. Finucchi backpedaling and this ball goes out of the end zone as well. So that wins. Pretty good factor, even though it doesn't look like it's that bad. Yeah, it must be a little more down there than it looks like, because that will just sail right out of the sure end zone. Sure did. So the Brackles will take over the 20-yard line. Let's see who will be at quarterback. It's been B.J. Rohde. As you see, pretty much everybody has kind of cleared out of here. Six play, 62-yard drive by Nevada. 217 it took, and the touchdown from Jeff Rowe to Nate Burleson. And Burleson now with uh, six receptions for 65 yards and one touchdown. And like I said, he did not have a reception for the first three quarters of this football game. It will be B.J. Rohde in there at QB. Chanted for Jerry Smith, incomplete. A Sinclair kicker scoreboard right there with uh, Boston College all over Temple. Final now, 36 to 14. Of course, earlier today, Michigan State beat Michigan 14 to 9. So Ohio State's undefeated and probably headed for the championship game. Notre Dame beat Rutgers. Broncos looking maybe to crack the top 20. You know, you take it by little baby steps. You crack the top 25. Now you look to maybe crack the top 20. A couple of teams this week have already lost ahead of them. Handoff to Donnie Heck, and Donnie Heck gets it out to the 24-yard line. It'll be third down for the Bronx, about five or six to go. So Brock Forsey, he's the, the guy of this game, as you know, the player of our of the game, 27 carries, 187 yards, and four touchdowns. What a day he's had, what a career he's had. And David Michael, 10 carries for 47 yards too, so 37 carries for 230 yards. Yep, it's pretty good production out of your tailback position. No question, the Bronco today with 283 yards rushing to only 38 for Nevada, and of course a lot of that's been on some sacks on roll late in the ball game. There's a flag. Ran out of clock. Well, Wayne, why don't we do the Jiffy Lube drive of the game? It all started with this uh, interception by Gabe Franklin. I'll tell you what, it's a great interception here. Bertelson breaks free for a second, but look at Gabe. Got it. Maybe no, I don't. Yeah, I do. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> he did. And then that resulted in this touchdown by... Number 36, Brock Forsey. Yep. And that is your Jiffy Lube drive of the game. Jiffy Lube, the well-oiled machine. Third down and 11. B.J. Rohde in trouble. Now he lets it fly, looking for Gilligan. Got it. Tim Gilligan from B.J. Rohde. First down. Great job of Gilligan. Continuing to run that route, B.J. had to scramble. He dropped straight back in the pocket. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Then he got flushed out to his right. Threw that ball on the run. It wasn't a pretty throw, but it was pretty effective. Now, he was directing traffic, too, B.J. Rohde was. So they were on the same page, and the Broncos pick up a big first down. Clock is stopped. 429 to go here in the ball game. There's Brock Forsey. He's done for the day. His body can now start to heal for a bowl game. Out to Jerry Smith. Well, Jerry's he got it out to him quickly, but he attracted about five blue jerseys. Well, the ball was thrown a little bit high, and Jerry had to get way up in the air to get it. He had a little trouble controlling it. By the time he got it under control, there was a, the cavalry had arrived. And another Nevada player coming off injury. I mean, these guys, Caves hit it right on the head. These guys are just banged up. Broncos, of course, lead the nation, averaging 46.8 points per game, and today they're at 44. Second down and nine. Pass complete to Fanuki. Fanuki gets down to the 39-yard line. That's going to be short of a first down, but it'll be third and short. Fanuki at the reception. Jones on the tackle. Wow, they marked him all the way up to the 38, so that'll bring up yes, uh, third and about one and a half or two. Pretty good spot. Yep. Hard to tell where he was actually went out of bounds with that sideline, though. They got all those guys standing right there. You just got to take a guess at it. So it'll be third down and two. Handoff to Donnie Heck. And Donnie Heck, we got a flag down. 
right in the middle of the pile. Bronco's going to pick up a first down. Somebody got Hex face mask as he was coming through. Nevada had that pretty well defended, but you grab that face mask, that'll happen. Ooh, that's a personal foul, too. That's the big one. Watch Donnie's head. You can see when the face mask is grabbed. There's one thing about it. When somebody grabs your face mask, your head is going with it. See that? We brought him down with the face mask, and that's why they gave him the 15 yards. So they'll mark it off here. It'll be a first down for Boise State. Keep this drive alive. With 3.12 to go in the season for Boise State, the regular season, Broncos headed to postseason play. And it's going to move it all the way down to the 23-yard line. That's been a great year on the Bronco Television Network. I tell you what, our crew's done a super job all season long. We appreciate all their efforts that they've done. And, of course, Larry, it's been fun working with you and Jeff again. It's been a fun season to sit here and watch. And there, Dan Hawkins just got the ice water. Pass incomplete. Would he be considered the 12th man on the field? Yeah, he was out on the field at that time. So he was trying to dodge it, but he got it. Bronco fans putting up a cheer now. There's going to be hugs all around for this thing. Undefeated WAC champion. And BYU was the last one to do that. In a few years since yes. it's happened. Donnie Heck. That's Carpenter. We're getting real Carpenter. deep. Carpenter, boy, I tell you what, we are getting deep down there. So Carpenter. Jeff Carpenter out of CUNA High School getting in there now. Yeah, see, even the PA goofed it up. A lot of guys getting to play here. If you, I guess at this point, if, you, if you're on the plane, you're going to play with the exception of you and me. <laughs> and a couple of boosters that were there. Yeah, I don't see Dr. Wade out there yet either. So. Yeah. Don't go that deep. Handoff. Carpenter spinning. Down to the 20-yard line. It'll be fourth down for Boise State. Carpenter, yeah. Logan Carter on the Clock tackle. continues to run with a minute 55 to go here in the ballgame. Rackles will probably just stay on the, on the ground here on fourth down. Nope. B.J. Rohde back to pass. Looking. Can't find a whole lot of anything. Except some good defenders, and he's down. So it'll be change of possession. Nevada will have the football at the 22-yard line. Boise State Broncos probably done on offense for today with a minute 25 to go here in this football game. But they got the job done in a hurry. 17 points in the first quarter. Last one. Now the only hiccup was at Arkansas, Larry. Yeah, that was a game that, uh, you know, I think Coach Hawkins wishes he had that first call back when he had Ryan didn't when he dropped back into the 10-yard punt formation. You know, he, he said it many times. That was his mistake. And, you know, that momentum, when you're in a situation where there's 70,000 maniacs in a stadium, and that is hard to overcome when you get behind that early. Boise State doing a good job of keeping the receiver inbounds and keeping the clock running. Nevada going without a huddle. Taco Bell clock ticks down now under a minute. And that's 60 seconds left to a WAC championship officially. Burleson makes the catch. He's going to be short of the first down, so the clock will continue to run. It'll be third down in about a yard. Subway sub of the game today. We're going to go kind of a little, little different thing. We're going to go with Nick Kalaikai, the kicker. Three field goals today. Did not miss an extra point. Nick Kalaikai, not really a sub, but, you know, for a Subway sub of the game, you got to go with it. You know what? He deserves a Subway. 
He deserves a sandwich. So we'll, instead of giving him a sandwich, we'll give him the sub of the game. You betcha. Subway. Eat fresh. Nick Eliakai, congratulations, Nick. Great season. Not done yet, obviously, with the bowl game coming up, but Nick Eliakai had a great year. Three field goals, as I mentioned today. 11 of 13 on the year for field goals. And He's had a great career, too. Yep. They're going to have to go shopping for a place kicker. Yeah. So 34 seconds left. Uh, they're going to kick it away on fourth and one, it appears, anyway. And they do. Boy, this, I tell you what, Jones has got a great foot. He's got a machine. Yeah, he is. He's got a machine right there. There's a flag down against Allen Boise State. Allen on the return. A uh, nice little return, but it's going to be negated by a hold or a block in the back. And now while we're waiting for this call, how about the Idaho Lottery lucky play of the game? Lucky for the Broncos that Tony Altieri was coming right up the middle when this punt was, you know, Jones has had some big ones today. This one didn't go very far, but it went the other way. Tony Altieri. The big block. So that is our Idaho Lottery lucky play of the day. Yeah, Tony Altieri, what a great game he's had. He's had a sack. He's had some, just, just the whole Bronco team having a great game here today. And of course, coming up with the WAC championship last week they turned down an offer by the commissioner Carl Benson to give them the championship they said uh, -uh. we if we don't win that game down in Nevada we're nothing more than co-champs and we're not going to accept it and right now they are going to be champs they're just taking a knee right here the final 20 seconds that's going to be the final play of the game listen to the Boise State crowd it's official a WAC championship for the Broncos Boise State came into Reno and needed a victory to complete the Leave No Doubt Tour, and they have left no doubt. It's kind of interesting, Dan Hawkins just went over to Jeff Rowe, the freshman quarterback out of McQueen High School, and shook his hand and said, son, great game. I don't want to see you for the next three years. Well, he's going to get a good dose of it. The kid's got some talent, there's no doubt about it. But what a dominating performance. This is the second half of the season by the Broncos. It started with the Fresno State game on October 18th, and it just didn't stop. Didn't stop a lick. All right, let's go down to Jeff Caves. He's got Dan Hawkins. All right, Hawk, you can uh, basically let it all hang out now, my man. It's it's over. You've done something that nobody has ever done at Boise State, and uh, BYU is the last team to do it in the WAC. You've got to take special pride. Yeah, well, just a great group of seniors, and just uh, you know the foundation that Coach Cutter laid here, and then we were able to carry it on, and just. Uh, these guys are winners, and we got a lot of talent. They do a lot of little things right, and it's just been a real special ride with all those guys. I know it's hard to look at regrets, and people bring up the one loss, getting in your way to get a BCS game possibly. Do you look back, or is it all forward motion? Nah, you can't do that. You got, you can't look now. You got to keep looking in the future the whole time. And hey, that game they beat us. We didn't play well. We made a call we probably shouldn't have made. We lost our quarterback, and hey, the season is what it is, and it's pretty fantastic at this point. So you can't look at what would have been. It's what is. Hawk, you got to be thrilled also with all these people that drove down here, put on the orange, and really took it to the Mackey Stadium, folks. Huge effort. Felt like a home game, really did. Just an awesome spectacle, all the orange up there. They were very loud and certainly the dominant force in the, in the game here. Well, Hawk, now you have to make some decisions, H-Bowl or Seattle Bowl, if that even becomes a possibility. What's your thoughts now? Well, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of ifs and muts and maybes out there. And I, I'd say the chances of us not being in the age four are pretty slim. And, you know, obviously, with all those great fans, our seniors would love to finish it up there, too. So I, I have a belief that's the way it's going to turn out. Congratulations to you, WAC champs. Thank you very much. All right, uh, we'll talk to Tony Altieri. You had a big day today. Tony, congratulations, bud. Thanks, yeah. You got it done. You also got a punt block. How did that happen? Uh, you know what? The first one, when they came out when we went safe, I saw the guard wasn't blocking me. So I said, if we do it again, I'm going to hit that gap and go for it. And that's basically what happened. He just gave me an arm. I blew right through him, and I came clean. Tony, you were laying down in Houston, Texas at, uh, last year against Rice. Is this why you came back? This is it. I mean, for these guys, for these fans, for the city of Boise, you know, I just, I'm just so glad I could come back. You know, God willing, he gave me the strength to come back and do this. And, you know, it's, it's just a nice way to go out. I, wanted, I, I told everybody I wanted to write the last chapter of my book. I didn't want to have it written for me. And, you know, hopefully I, hopefully we did that tonight. Any preferences on what uh, the team, in your opinion, would like to do post-game 
or post uh, season wise a shot at Seattle or stay in the H Bowl? I mean, I, I'd, I'd love to play another game in Boise in front of the fans. But, you know, that's not for us to decide. We'll let the people make the decisions, make that decision. We'll play whoever. Congratulations, WAC champ. Nice job. We're also going to hustle and uh, try to get Brock Forsey for us. Well, we'll have to take a quick break. We, we'll try to get Ryan Dinwiddie, though. We're going to get him some more face time. We try to spread it around here and there. We talked to some linemen real quick. All right, Ryan. Quickly, tremendous junior season for you. This is what you thought would happen, isn't it? It's like exactly what we thought would happen. We expected undefeated season, but you know that slipped out of our fingers the second week of the season, and it just shows the maturity of our team. Tell me. <laughs> and uh, you know we're an awesome team. It's an awesome year, miracle season. I mean, it's just awesome. Well, I know you're looking for some time off. December 7th, I think you get some time off. You feeling all right? Yeah, I'm feeling all right. I mean, the whole team's gonna be glad to have a couple weeks off and get back to halfway normal with our bodies, but uh, right now that's the, the least of our worries. We just want to go celebrate. All right, whack champs. Congratulations. See you on the golf course. I hope I don't see him actually, Paul, I'll lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get a golf game with him, Caves. No, I don't. Wayne? All right, thank you very much, Dave. I appreciate that. Thanks for all your hard work. We'll talk to you in a couple of minutes here about your impressions of the season. And, of course, you can see the Broncos. High five and all the fans here. The Broncos are the WAC champions. 8-0. Perfect on the WAC season. They have left, no doubt. 44-7, the final chapter. We'll be back in a moment. All right, we are back. 44-7, Boise State wins it. Let's go back down to Jeff Caves, who's got a special guest. All right, Gene Blamire is with me. Let's get this bowl situation now out in the open. What is the humanitarian bowl prospects? Well, I think they're excellent. They always have been. And, uh, you know, that's a, the bowl for the WAC. And uh, I think, as I've said all along, that uh, that bowl is tied to the WAC. Uh, and uh, a WAC team is probably going to play in it. So it makes sense that uh, since we won the WAC that we would be there. Uh, you know, our chances of playing in the Seattle Bowl have been about 1%. Uh, they, were, they have a contract with the Mountain West and with the ACC. And the ACC has qualified all of their teams. If the Mountain West doesn't qualify their teams, then Seattle's going to invite a Pac-10 team, plain and simple. So uh, there really hasn't been uh, a scenario where we would be invited to the Seattle Bowl. That's just been a lot of speculation, and it's unfortunate because the chances of that ever developing are about 1%. Well, so, like I've always said, uh, it's highly unlikely that if we won the conference, we would go anywhere other than Boise. All right, Gene, I know you want to go get that trophy. Congratulations. Well, guys, they're going to go pick up the WAC championship trophy right now. There's really nothing left to say about this team. These guys have left no doubt like they thought they wouldn't. And I think it's an unbelievable group of poised young guys that will do things with their life based on the lessons they've learned from Ohocrates every Friday night. And they'll think about it when they're Poe's age. They, well, they may remember, or they, they probably forget when they're Poe's age. But it's been a heck of a ride, and I appreciate your guys' support as well. Kermit, tremendous. And uh, we hope to see you next year. Wayne? You bet. Hey, thank you, Jeff. Pleasure working with you this whole football season and uh, keeping us informed of what's going on on the sidelines. What do you say, 8-0, 11-1? I mean, it's just been a great ride. Well, what a tremendously audacious team this is. I mean, they walk into here as we look at the Dodge final stats of the game, almost 500 yards in total offense. But this team walks in to a place they hadn't won in 15 years and just dismantles, and I mean dismantled, the Wolfpack today. It was not close from the get-go. 285 yards rushing of those. 187 belonged to one Brock Forsey on 27 carries and four touchdowns. It was a Brock Forsey Boise State day, just as it has been. And let's kudos to the defense. They only allowed seven points, and that was again, those second teamers getting out there, getting some much-needed experience. And I gotta tell you what, the first teamers, I don't think they care. It was just a great performance again by the Bronco defense, fourth straight game. Well, this defense has just played tremendous. And uh, what about these fans that came down from Boise to, to watch this game, to celebrate a WAC championship? I can see them all now trying to crowd over by the locker room where the Broncos are. It's going to be – we might not get out of here for a while, Wayne. <laughs> all righty. Well, that's going to do it for us. We've got one more uh, spot back here. We'll be back here in a minute to tell you about our next Bronco television broadcast coming up. But, again, the final today, 44-7, Boise State.